The following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. City of Nebraska, a college football game of national dimension. The Washington Huskies, number four. The Nebraska Cornhuskers, number nine. The winner will have a chance at a national championship. The loser, probably not. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson. Pleasure to come back to one of our favorite cities, Lincoln, Nebraska, the home of the Huskers. We've got the Huskies and the Huskers in this one. And uh, since Colorado beat Nebraska here a year ago, the tone has been set kind of for this game tonight because the loyal partisans have been shouting loudly, it's time to win a big one. Let's find out if the Washington Huskies deserve to be number four in the land. Bob Greasy, what do you think? Well, Tom Osborne is nothing short of the winningest active coach in Division I football, but he has lost eight of the last 12 times he has played a team with a winning record, and he has lost the last four bowl games. Some of the fans and some of the players are beginning to question just how good this program is. They'll get a chance to prove it tonight against the Huskies of Washington. Look for this ball game tonight. Nebraska brings in the number one rushing offense in the country, and opposite them, Washington defensively is the number one rushing defense in the country. The key, obviously, in the offensive and defensive lines, whoever controls the line of scrimmage will win the ball game. This series will end next year in Seattle. And that game may also be a very big one because these two teams are, in fact, quite young. But this is a night for the Cornhuskers, they say, to make their point. I'm sure the Washington Huskies feel the same way. <laughs> Coach Tom Osborne, his teams during his 18 seasons here have averaged nine wins per year. They have been to 18 consecutive bowls, but lately they haven't won the big one. That sets the frantic tone for tonight's game between the Huskies and Huskers. Let's face it. Dot Matrix. Football. Brought to you by Chevrolet. The heartbeat of America. The cars more people depend on. By Payne Weber, we believe our most important investment is an investment in relationships. And by Canon Bubble Jet Personal Printers. Laser quality at dot matrix prices. Well, needless to say, this little store located right across from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln has been doing a land office business for the better part of the day. You need some bucks, though, because it ain't cheap. Now let's check in with Jack Aroop. Keith, how many times have we talked about the 12th man, that home field advantage? Well, here at Memorial Stadium with 76,000 plus and so many sellouts, you would think that Coach Tom Osborne would have had the home field advantage. But he told us that in the last 10 years, he doesn't feel he's had it. So on Tuesday at his press conference, he issued a challenge to the fans here. He said, get into the game. Be more vociferous. Clap your hands. Wish us well as we try to go for a victory tonight. And I don't know about the Washington coach, Don James, whether he took it all to heart or not, but for the last few days, while they were practicing up at Husky Stadium, they played the Nebraska fight song over the track PA. And let me tell you right now, it is deafening down here, Keith. I can tell. We're sitting on top of it. Area strengths and weaknesses as uh, Nebraska receives. Well, we told you they led the nation in rushing 573 yards on the average. And for the University of Washington, they gave up only 67 yards per game last year. Nate Turner, number 22. Tyrone Hughes, number 33. Will receive the ball for the Cornhuskers. Travis Henson will kick it off for the Washington Huskies. The temperature is 73 degrees. The wind is gusting up to 30 miles an hour. And the wind carries the ball almost into the stands as Henson kicks it off. 
So they'll bring it out to the 20. It is very comfortable temperature wise. However, it will go down tonight. And coming out to set him up in the first defensive series is Keaton McCann. He's a big guy, 6'2, 200. He's a Texan from Grand Prairie. The rest of the backfield will have Derek Brown as the eye back, Omar Soto, your fullback, with Turner at wing back, and he's more of a blocking back than he is a wing back. Mitchell opens a tight end. Bostic is wide out. McKenson hands it off to the eye back. There's that old Husker cutback draw. And broken big by Derek Brown, a sophomore from La Habra, California, takes it out to the 36 yard line. Take a look at the linebackers. 54 is Hoffman. Watch him run around the block. Right here, he runs around the block, and the man comes right up through the hole. That's a big psychological advantage. First play for Nebraska. You get the draw play going. The uh, offensive lineman blocks the defender where he wants to go, and the eye back picks the direction. And it worked beautifully there. Those people up front are big. They try it again. Hipman eats him up. Steve Hipman just ate him up and drops him for a two-yard loss. Up front, Weger 300, Jensen 305, Scott 260, Shields 295, Warboom 310. That room you see there is the reason why they are so big. Because Boyd Epley's strength program here is exceptional. That may be the most sophisticated weight room I've ever seen. Lance Lewis has checked into the backfield now. Omar Soto is leaving, as you can see there, with what appears to be an ankle. And Lance Lewis, who had been sharing time as a starter with Soto, comes in. He's been hurt. And now he shows up as Soto is helped off the field. That could be a big loss because he's a tough running back. Whistles and flags before the snap. The defense, and it'll give us a chance to set it up for you, they go with three down, and they set two backers up on the outside, making it look like a five and sometimes a seven-man front. It's procedure against Nebraska, but it's Mason, uh, Rogers, Impman. Those are the three down guys, and the backers are Jones, Hoffman, Fraley, and Shields, with Fields and Jones as the outside people. The corners are Hall and Bailey. They play man. Delaney will shadow Johnny Mitchell, the quick tight end, and Pau Koa is the man who'll take your hat off on the blitz. Here comes the blitz. They throw it into the crowd and get away with it as Tyrone Hughes comes in from the split end position and makes the catch. There is no gain, maybe a half a yard or so on the play, but that could have been a huge loss. It was a, it was a wide receiver screen back to the middle of the field. McCann did a nice job of getting rid of the football, and if Hughes could have broke one tackle, could have made a big play. That's a nice play for McCann. This passing game for Nebraska is not sophisticated. That was a chance for a big play with an easy completion. So they're back almost to the original line of scrimmage prior to the procedure call. And they go to the eye back. And the game by Brown is to the 40 and just across it as Dave Hoffman, the inside linebacker, 54, makes the tackle. And now the Cornhuskers will have to punt. The wind is, is an element here at Husker Stadium or Memorial Stadium that is never a constant. It's blowing across the stadium, but it doesn't always blow the same direction down below. It swirls around. Dino you know, Bryant is closing in on uh, a record at Washington as a kick returner, and Mike Stiggy, his first punt of the season. And it's a good one. Into the wind, gets a nice tight spin on it. Bryant takes the ball at the 18-yard line. One of his own men knocks him off balance, and he goes down up at the 22. That's a fine kick, 43 yards into the wind. Here on Monday night. The Washington Huskies go to the attack. The quarterback, Billy Joe Hobart, big guys, flushed out of the pocket. Roll down for a one-yard loss. And the Nebraska Cornhuskers are pumped. The crowd is roaring. The strengths and weaknesses for the Huskies on offense. Well, the Huskies led the Pac-10 in five offensive categories. They returned eight starters from last year's team. And for Nebraska, they lost six players, six starters to the NFL draft last year. They led the Pac-10, I mean the Big Eight, in defense, but they lost six of their players to the NFL draft. 
Second down, 11, as Hobart lost a yard. The ball is at the 21. And the ball goes to Jay Barry. Nothing there. We're waiting for the initial flow of adrenaline yep. to subside yep. here. It will in time. Billy Joe Hobart, 21 out of 31 against Stanford. He's a big guy, as I told you, 6'3", 225. Jay Barry opens the tailback. Matt Jones, your fullback. McKay Bailey for the wideouts, and Aaron Pierce is the tight end. It is third down and 11. This time, there is time for Hobart. He throws a bullet to uh, Orlando McKay, the senior out of Mesa, Arizona, and he goes down right around the marker. First down for Washington. So that will silence the crowd just a little bit. This is a big offensive front, too. You see both tackles are over 300 with the guards at 290 and 270, and Cunningham in the middle, Ed stands in at 285. Big people play in this game these days. First down for Washington. The pitch goes to Barry. Looks for the crack. Spins to the 34. That's the two-yard pickup. The defense for the Cornhuskers of Nebraska, the three down guys are Raymakers, Engelbert, and Perella. Outside backers will step up and make it a five and sometimes a six, seven-man front with uh, the backers being Hill, Petco, Anderson, and White. The defensive secondary of Cotton, Carmer, Bird, and Leggett. Cotton and Leggett are your corners. Cotton, for example, has a 40-inch vertical jump. In case you haven't checked it lately, just look at it. That's above your easy chair. When the wideouts for Washington, McKay and Bailey, go against the Nebraska corners, Cotton and Leggett, you'll have a track meet. The, they average about 4-4 speed. I mean, that's a quick group right there. Back goes Hobart. Billy Joe has some time. Five more on a rollout. Throws underneath to his tight end, Pierce. It is broken up by number 99, Mike Petko, who is a senior from Servite High School in Anaheim, California, playing at Nebraska. Your comments were very accurate, uh, Keith, about the crowd and the emotions. The thing that Washington and Hobart want to do is just try and make some first downs and, and take the crowd out of it. Now, he called timeout the last time because the football was on the ground, and if the ground is wet, when he rolls that ball over, it's going to get wet because they wet the surface before the game for better traction. On third down and eight, Hobart lets it go big. McKay's out there, and it is incomplete. McKay fell down screaming because he felt Leggett stepped on his foot and tripped him, but he doesn't get a call. Soto, we're told, has been taken inside for x-rays on his right ankle. Lucky to get that one back. Leggett, number three in the red jersey, is going for the ball, and it looks like their feet do get tangled up, but no call is there is the right call because Leggett was going for their interception. Now the Husky quarterback, Hobart goes back in punt formation with Corey Dixon, the man they want to handle it, number one. Not a particularly good kick. It takes a soft bounce. Hughes comes up on the ball and almost slid over the top of it and almost lost it, and it was a foolish risk by Tyrone Hughes. He almost lost the ball. 9.59 to go in the first quarter. 42-yard punt. Who's got the marketing plan? I do. Sales forecast. Right here. Presentation boards? Murphy's got them. Where's Murphy? This is the final boarding call for Delta Flight 6. Maddie got Klein knows. Jar. Tom Osborne standing there. Right behind him is one of his tight ends, William Washington, the best blocker. He's dinged up, though, and may not play much tonight. Johnny Mitchell's in there right now. The Huskers come up with one wide. 24-yard line, first down much there for Derek Brown as Steve Eppman gets his second tackle of the night. This is the top ten of the Associated Press and the top three guys idle this weekend. Florida, however, lost at Syracuse. 
And 38-21 score. You know, back in 1936, when the AP poll was first started, these two teams were watching tonight. Washington's fifth, and Nebraska was ninth. And as we play tonight, going into this game, the Huskies were fourth in the AP poll, and Nebraska ninth. So that's how close we are to what things were like back in 1936. But the game is different. Change a little bit, Hadden. We got a report on Omar Soto, the fullback for Nebraska. It's a sprain. He may not be back. Sprain of the knee and ankle area. Tyrone Hughes, number 33, checks in as Nebraska goes to Cripps at the top of the screen. Three wide out. Keith and McCant takes off. He can run. situation where the quarterback has to drop back and pass you're going to win the football game but this is what the Nebraska quarterbacks give you and that's the ability to run when you uh, drop back it's almost like a quarterback draw McCann is not going to throw for 200 yards but he may run for half of that and throw for half of it Ennis this is GW on the 40 yard line this is Derek Brown the eye back and right now the uh, Nebraska offensive front is blowing Washington off the ball down Huskers the ball is at the Washington 49 yard line but can't roll throws has man wide open over there Tyrone Hughes he got completely away they're picking on Dana Hall and Hall is shaken up on that play well the key to this aggressive attacking that Washington plays is to have good corners on the outside that can cover one-on-one. -on -one. And Hall can do that. But they're going right at him right now. Unbalance, open side of the field. It's picked it out to the eye back, Derek Brown. He cuts. It is touchdown. enough speed to get in the end zone there have been balloons released all over the stadium and some of them are settling down on the field you've got a man down he's wearing the Washington colors and it looks to me like it's Dana Hall and Hall was holding his rib cage a moment ago and he may have been dinged in the rib cage so that's the second time he's been on the ground and uh, we've had Omar Soto out already with a severe sprain ankle and now Dana Hall may well have some damage to his rib cage. The touchdown play was good from 27 yards out. This Hall number five making the tackle. You know, it looks like he his rib cage may have fallen on the uh, the shoe or the ankle, the foot. Yeah, but he got up uh, well ago holding Derek himself yes, in the very same place. Yes, he did. Brown now has six carries yeah. and 58 yards in the ball game. I'd have to guess where he's holding. That's either a bruised or a sprained uh, area in the ribs. And that's a pain. Byron injury. Bennett is in to try for the extra point as soon as time resumes. That hurts. If that's a cartilage, it can be a cartilage too. You know, it really hurts. It's not a serious injury. It's just it's just a painful one. Bennett has missed three extra points this year. Stiggy, the punter, holds it. Kick is up. The kick is good. 
So in eight minutes and 41 seconds to go in the first quarter, the Nebraska Cornhuskers take the lead, seven to nothing. Getting a no. October 17, 1953, Washington head coach Don James, four for eight, six to two yards, played defensive back as well as the Miami Hurricanes came to Lincoln and lost to the Cornhuskers 20 to 16. Pretty good quarterback. Now, yeah, he was. Pretty 38 good. years later, here he is. Yeah. Pretty good quarterback on the other side of the field, too, Tom Osborne. Played for uh, Hastings College here in Colorado. I mean, in uh, oh. <laughs> Colorado. Hello. <laughs> in Nebraska. Went on to play in the NFL, as a matter of fact. Tommy Smith and Walter Bailey are your deep people. 15 and 23. Byron Bennett will kick it off. the 16-yard line and knocked down up around the 24. And the crowd is roaring and the Cornhuskers are flying all over the place right now. Let's go back. It's going to be an option. These men are coming. Watch the block here by the red jersey. Come down and block on number eight, Talele. Comes down. The option man it's a good block. I think that's Turner, number 22. He's the guy that worried Jimmy Lambright, the Washington defensive coach, because he's a big blocking back, what he is. This is Jay Barry, the tailback, 190-pound junior from North Glen, Colorado, and he moves from the 24 out to about the 27. Texas A&M, an upset loser today, and there were some stunning scores today. Ohio State winning their third of the season. Colorado buried Minnesota. Second down and seven. Corbett on second down to throw it, goes to Pierce. First down out at the 40-yard line. Aaron Pierce. Is a senior from Seattle. He's a big tight end at 6'5", 240. So we figure both tight ends are going to be very much involved in the passing game through this game tonight. Nebraska is out to a first quarter lead of 7 to nothing. And that's a big point, too, Keith, that Nebraska got out to a lead because it keeps this, this, fan, these, this crowd, the fans, in the ball game. Washington coming in would have likely gotten ahead and taken them out of the game, but they are in this game big time right now. That's the way you beat Nebraska is get in front and then make them play case, catch up. But to do that, you got to stop the run. Hobart almost falls down, throws the ball underneath the coverage, and Orlando McKay will go for a first down on the Nebraska side of the field. He's inside the 45-yard line. There's almost always room underneath the coverage when you've got your linebackers tucked in as tight as these two teams play. Well, that's what Washington wants to do, spread you out and then find the biggest mismatch and then work on that linebacker or that defensive back. From just inside the 44-yard line, the snap, quick pop, trying to set up the screen for McKay. That's a forward pass. Yeah. That's a forward pass. But they're scrambling for it and covering it just in case it had been a lateral. Three wide receivers lined up this way. Number four, McKay, is just going to take one step. Hobart is going to fire down. Now, you do that because the man that was supposed to be covering McKay was off of him about seven or eight yards. McKay just started to run before he caught the football. Well, how does it go? I mean, if you're not covered, you're the hot man. That's a phase of the old run and shoot. A lot of times, if you're not covered, you know you're going to get the football. Trips to the bottom of the screen. Three wide outs, and the fourth one is at the top. And Hobart back has time. Penalty flag down. Pass is complete to Mario Bailey, but you're going to get a holding call against Washington. That play is going to get wiped out. Referee threw the flag back to the line of scrimmage.
The passing game for Washington, Keith, is really there. Nebraska not adept at this. Here's a linebacker. He's going to blitz. Here's McKay, number four. Watch him as he goes right into this area. There's not going to be anybody near him. You can't play this way. You can't play pass defense like this. It's got to be tougher than this. Yeah, they'll eat him up. Oh, yeah. That. Some big mistakes in the coverage for uh, the uh, Cornhuskers. There's Dana Hall. They've strapped him up. Yeah. So it's a bruise. Well, that, that will not only affect the defensive secondary, but their whole defense because it's key that those corners can cover man to man to allow the blitzes uh, uh, with the linebackers and defensive line. They may not be as aggressive now without him in the ballgame. Second down and 20 as the ball comes back to the Washington 46. Huskers almost jump, but they get back out of the neutral zone, and here goes Vino Bryant. We saw Vino Bryant a couple of weeks ago at Stanford on grass, and with a sore leg, didn't appear all that quick. But he's been healing, and you put him on a rug, boy, he's quick. Well, that is one advantage that Washington had over Nebraska is that they had two weeks to prepare for this game. They played Stanford, then had two weeks to heal and also to prepare for the nuances that uh, Nebraska uses. Nebraska didn't have that luxury. They played last week. Matt Jones has checked into the backfield now for the Washington Huskies along with Leif Johnson and uh, Jay Barry. So you've got two fullbacks and a tailback in there. It's third down and three. For Washington, that's Billy Joe Hobart, big guy from Puyallup, talking to the referee, who is John Laurie out of Springfield, Missouri. This is a big eight crew. The umpire is Kevin Hart, the linesman Mark Hittner, Kent Houck, the line judge, Terry Porter, the field judge, the side judge is Phil Laurie, and Artie Falk is the back judge. <clears throat> and uh, the pollen is blowing in off the cornfield. I'll tell you, boys. Is it getting to you? Tearing me up here all of a sudden. <laughs> be a big play right here in the early going. They load it up on the right side. Give it to Barry. And it's a heck of a defensive play by number 48, Mike Anderson, the inside backer. And you got a flag. It's a hold, and it's against Washington. So the Huskies now have been caught holding twice in this possession. You will not help yourself doing that. No, you certainly won't. That is, when you're on the road, it's tough enough to win. But if you have a lot of penalties or turnovers, you're just fighting an uphill battle. Without that penalty, they're in range of Travis Hansen. With the penalty, no way. remaining six minutes and 15 seconds that's an outstanding graphic right there he's never won fewer than nine games or lost more than three in any one season yeah but he hasn't won that many bowl games lately what have you done for me lately there you go Hobart's pass is away Bailey dropped it didn't drop it back there defending was Leggett and Leggett was right in his face and got a hand on it so that'll get the punt in order for the Washington Huskies. And the crowd roars for the Cornhuskers. John Bostick, who is from uh, Interlake High School, Bellevue, Washington, is the deep man for Nebraska. Billy Joe Hobart gets it up into the wind with a good spin on it. And the ball goes to the corner. That's Great a good kick. kick. Great kick. He keeps on walking, comes out, stops just short of the seven-yard line. And that's where Nebraska will go to work, a 40-yard punt. Old Coffin Corner kicked that. 
Next Saturday, ABC's College Football brings you an afternoon of action, first at 12 Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific time. That's noon Eastern and 9 o'clock in the morning on the coast. The number one ranked Seminoles of Florida State and the third ranked Michigan Wolverines. At 3.30 Eastern and 12.30 Pacific time, we have regional games for you. Georgia Tech, Clemson, Colorado, Stanford, Pitt, Minnesota. Check your local listing. Here comes the eye back, Derek Brown, and picks up a couple of yards before Dave Huffman, the inside linebacker, takes him down. Chris Zizda is in there at a guard position now for Nebraska, number 64. They're all big. He's at 285. There's a look at your comparison. Mainly, that's a lot of size in the offensive line for Nebraska. Washington does it with speed and quickness. There's only two big guys in that line. The rest of them can all run. Number 10, William Doctor, backing out of the picture there, has replaced St. Hall. Keithan McCant keeps it, and he's dragged down just over the 10-yard line. Andy Mason brought him down. There's William Doctor. He's a senior out of El Paso, Texas. Has played a lot. Certainly has. Had two interceptions last year. Has played a lot of games. Started a lot of games for this ball club over the past. Vince Hawkins comes in now. He's an ex back out of junior college. He's from New Orleans. He's in replacing Turner at the wing back spot. Blocking back. Here comes McCant. Taken down from behind. And so the Huskies send a man trailing on the play to Laley. And to Laley, the rover, or the uh, strong safety, if you will, right there, number eight, pursued the man and brought him down. This is one thing that Washington should be good at, and that is pursuing the option because they have a lot of speed to run from sideline to sideline. With Nebraska leading 7-0 in the first quarter, they go to the punt now with Bino Bryant, 29 back, and 47, Mike Stiggy. Stiggy had a 43-yarder his first time into the win. This time, he's got to kick it out of his end zone, and the Washington Huskies want to talk about things. Time remaining, first quarter, 4-0-2. I just read up a strong showing against the Buffalo Bills. Monday Night Football, the Jets and the Chicago Bears, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. I wanted it, Washington. I'll take it, Keith. The figures that Washington is going to get pretty good field position. They're punting Nebraska from their own end zone. Bean O'Brien, number two in the nation last year in punt returns, re returned three punts for touchdowns. Now Mike Stiggy's got to kick it out of the end zone. There's no pressure on him, and he didn't get all of it. But what he did do is prevent Bino Bryant from getting his hands on it. He sure did. But they're going to get the ball inside the Nebraska 40-yard line. It is a 30-yard punt, and the Washington Huskies are camped on the Cornhusker 38-yard line first down. But Nebraska leads 7 to nothing. Here's Jack Arruda. Keith Miles Corrigan, who was talking to the offensive line and the backfield when they were off on that series of downs while the defense was on for the Huskies, well, he said they're not at all upset with their play so far, except for the number of penalties. He said we've got to reduce those penalties, and we keep drives alive to the TD. Bino Bryant carries the ball, and he is clobbered by number 92, John Farella, a 290-pound junior from Grand Island, Nebraska. There are some fellows swapping paint in the trenches tonight. <laughs> they certainly are. This is going to be a physical game, no question about it. Both teams are big. We mentioned Nebraska lost six defensive guys to the NFL draft. Take a look inside at the, uh, the hand fighting going on. That's Perella, number 92. That's a hit, folks. That's a major league hit. Billy Joe Hobart back to throw it, getting some heat. Gets his pass away. The pass is incomplete. He threw it right down the alley where there was nobody, and it got rid of it and didn't take the loss because uh, uh, Trev Alberts, number 34, was about to jump his bone. Uh, Billy, Billy Joe wanted to make sure that the receiver knew that he was expecting him to go one way, and he went the other way. Colbert is now 3 of 8 for 42 yards. Not a very good start. This is only Hobart's second collegiate start. It is. Too. That's, that's for sure. He went big time in his first start, though. He's not uh, burdened with a whole lot of wisdom yet. <laughs> <laughs> that may be good. Back to throw it. 
gets it off, and it is incomplete. Mario Bailey was downfield, and Bailey was being covered by Kenny Wilhite. Nowhere to throw it, Keith. Nope. Everybody's covered. The crowd gives him a hand. At 3.07, Washington's got a punt. Last time, Hobart knocked it out of bounds at the Cornhusker 7. That was a big series. As you take a look at Bostic to receive the punt, big series defensively for Nebraska. We've been talking about Washington defensively as you take a look at Hobart. Nebraska's defense was pretty good last year in the uh, Big 8. Hobart's punt got a lot of spin on it. It'll sail into the crowd. It went into the stand. So it'll come back out to the 20-yard line with 3.01 to go in the first quarter. And Nebraska leading 7 to nothing. It's a harvest moon. At least it looked like a harvest moon. At the conclusion of tonight's game, we'll choose a Chevrolet most valuable player from each team for the 21st year. Chevrolet scholarship program giving $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of each school. All right, Nebraska coming back to the attack. Keithan McCann hands it off to the eye back, and down he goes. Dave Hoffman, the inside linebacker, getting another tackle. And this time he takes Derek Brown down hard. There's a loss of a yard on the play. Second down, 11. You see Hoffman led the Huskies in tackling last year. He had eight in the opening game at Stanford two weeks ago. Bostic coming wide at the bottom of the picture. Hughes at the top of the picture. McCant checking off. Little quick drop, wants to throw. Gets his pass away to the sidelines, and the pass is incomplete. Intended for Chris Garrett, the tight end. Garrett in right now. You're going to see Nebraska go a lot tonight, I think, with two tight ends. Mitchell is not the strongest blocker of the group. Washington may be. Garrett and Lysey behind them are also very good. Third down, 11 now for Nebraska. Keith, we just get word that Soto, the fullback, has a broken right fibula. Oh, boy. So he'll be out the rest of the ballgame. And season. And, and a few more. Yeah. McCant chased out of the pocket. He will not get, however, much advance. There's a penalty flag back there around the 13-yard line. That came out of the referee's pocket and almost surely means holding. But the new rule this year is they penalize you from where the infraction occurred. So let's see what this is. That can mean something. It's holding against Nebraska. All right, now, where, where did the holding take place? That's the next question, and that'll determine whether or not Washington accepts. Well, it's third down. It's going to be fourth down, so they're going to decline it. But if it happened six yards behind the line of scrimmage, one of the offensive line pass blocking, it goes 15, 10 yards back from the six yards behind the line of scrimmage, so it, in effect, would be a 16-yard loss. Right. So the Huskies want the ball, and so they put Nebraska back in punt formation, and Bryant waits for it, standing just inside his own 45-yard line. Stiggy had a 30-yarder the second time. First time, he had a 43. Little pressure on him, and he hits it. That's a good kick, really good kick into the wind. Nothing but red shirts looking at Pete O'Brien. Down hard at the 41-yard line after a 46-yard punt. Tried Osborne, talking about Keith and McCants, said this. Well, he's always had great ability, Keith. He's, uh, you know, in terms of a good arm and good speed, uh, his problem has been inconsistency, just uh, at times, uh, and sometimes maybe not being quite as sharp on the offense, you know, just knowing when to audible and so on. But he's really made a lot of improvement. Last spring, he began to come on real well, and he's come on even better this fall. And right now, is is playing very well. Washington Huskies have the ball right now, and they move it as Bino Bryant carries on that little pass up to near the 48-yard line and brought down by Trev Alberts. It's still Nebraska 7 to nothing with 1.40 to go in the first quarter. It's a little screen pass to Bryant. Nebraska 
completely different defensively, philosophically, than Washington. They're a bend-don't-break defense is Nebraska. Washington just the opposite. Attack, blitz, make big plays. Second down, long three. Billy Joe Hobart looking down the middle, goes the other way with it. Fast caught, great catch by Mario Bailey. That is concentration. Bailey's only 5'9", 170, was covered like a blanket, but then all of a sudden put those great legs under him and went up and brought it down. <laughs> Hobart got away with that one. I, yep. That was almost intercepted. He threw it high so the linebacker couldn't get it. Watch Tyrone Bird. He's much bigger, too. There's a look at the behind the defense. Hobart looks down the middle, looks off of Carver, 31, almost picked off. That was close. It went right through Bird's hands. Yeah. Huh? They fake it outside. Ball is dropped by the fullback, Matt Jones. They fake the pitch to Bryant, handed it instead to the fullback. Jones had plenty of room to gain about 8 or 10 yards, and he just simply dropped it. Well, somebody might have tipped it going by, but Matt couldn't put it away. And you see the time ticking away in the first quarter. Nebraska holds the lead at 7 to 9. Second down and 10. Ball just short of the Cornhuskers 43 yard line and Hobart throws the pass complete to Orlando McKay. There's a penalty flag down. The gain on the play is down to about the 31 yard line. But let's see about the flag. It came from the linesman. holding and Don James is not happy. Well he shouldn't be because it was a good call. Take a look right here. Number 70 Mala Mala is going to be holding. This call came from the side judge and he looks at the in man on the left hand of number 70. Look at this. That was a good call. Don James has no complaints about that unless he's yelling at his old man. baseball scores Boston now just a half game back of the Toronto Blue Jays so tightening up in a race it? and they got a race in the National League West too between the Dodgers and the Braves Braves leading by half they play tonight yep. time winding down into the quarter and I think they're going to let it go and they will. Over looking at the clock will not call a play. So after the first 15 minutes in Lincoln, Nebraska, the home team leads seven to nothing. Thanks, Coach. The preceding message was furnished by the College Football Association. A few minutes ago, Dana Hall, the cornerback for Washington with bruised ribs, the lower part of his rib cage, put on a flak jacket because it covers that portion of the bruise. And he's going to give that a try. Yeah, see if he can it's like, like closing play. the barn door and the horse is out, though. His ribs yep. are hurting, and that's what he's got to overcome is the pain with him. Right. So the Huskies go to work. Hobart's pass. Wynn got a hold of it. He didn't have a good tight spin on it, and you have got to spin the ball when you are working in the wind. Should be used to that, though, up in Seattle. They threw a lot of wind. Let's take a look at the first quarter statistics. The score, obviously, in favor of Nebraska. Total of the plays are about the same. Look at the rushing yardage, 76 for Nebraska. Washington, in a ball game, normally only gives up like 70, 67 yards. So Nebraska already over the limit as far as Washington is concerned. They're down at 26 for the Huskies. Hobart pumps it, lets it go for Orlando McKay. It's going to be picked off. And it is intercepted by Kenny Wilhite. The ball was underthrown. The wind got it and fell right into the arms of Will Height. If Hobart had been able to throw it far enough, McKay would have scored because he was gone. Well, take a look. Man to man, McKay and Will Height. Will Height is the number three cornerback, but he plays a lot. He's beaten by just a step, but he sees the ball is underthrown. Good vision on the ball and picks off his third interception of the, of the season. 
Another look. The Cornhuskers go to work from their own 29-yard line. McCant going outside is taken down just about the line of scrimmage. Keith and McCant, fifth-year senior from Grand Prairie, Texas, 6'2", 200 pounds. It's a good look at Will Hyde. Again, the defensive philosophy fits right in with Tom Osborne. The offensive philosophy, that is conservative. They don't throw many passes, and they don't do a lot of things on defense to allow big plays to happen. They're leading right now 7-0 over the number four ranked team in the nation, the Washington Huskies. Florida was defeated today in Syracuse. USC lost today to Arizona State. McCant still has the ball after a good fake. Gets pressure, throws behind the tight end, Chris Garrett, and it is incomplete. Hintman has three tackles in the ball game so far. He was closing in on that one, and McCant heard the earth, felt the earth tremble and got rid of it. So look at McCant in the first game against Stanford. He batted a ball up into the air and intercepted it. He says, I, don't, I didn't know what to do with it after I caught it. He says, I, I got to work on that in practice. Washington so far has had uh, its tango offense going, but Nebraska, on the other hand, took one in for the touchdown on a 27-yard run by Derrick Brown. Otherwise, they've been pretty well shut down, too. There is a, probably a checkoff, Keith, where Washington had all 11 guys up on the line of scrimmage. McCant checked off, hoping to get a, a quick trap up the middle, split the defense, and get down the field, but no such luck. How do you read the battle along the line of scrimmage now? Is it beginning to even up? It's about even. Nebraska had that one drive where they got two key runs off. Aside from that, it's even. Sticky is back to punt. Vino Bryant back to return it. Kick is away with the wind, and he'll knock that one out of the county. It's over Bryant's head, headed for the end zone. Turning back up the field! Down at the three-yard line! What a spectacular kick! They're the worst team in college football. The Great selection, superior service, nobody compares. National Powers meet the number one team in the country. Florida State tackles third-ranked Michigan next Saturday on ABC Sports. By 14 yards, his longest punt ever. <laughs> Boy, he's well-rested. He didn't punt the first two games. <laughs> first leg. Well, it's gut check time right here for the Huskies in this first half. Nebraska obviously is going to load up and try to pin him in here. They give the ball to Matt Jones, and Jones finds some daylight sliding off the left side, running behind Mala Mala, and he gets out near the nine-yard line. So from the two to the nine, that's seven. And it's seven-nothing, Nebraska leading. Heard on the play is Perella, the defensive right tackle for the Cornhuskers. Washington. Up. First half possession. Look at the, the third one down. They got the ball on the 38-yard line in Nebraska. Three plays and they had to punt. They've not done anything with it when they've had it. Tailback Barry. Jay Barry is spinning in the crowd. And he's close to a first down. If the mark stands where the linesman has put his left foot down, it's going to be first down Washington. So they'll sort it out. Looks like they'll bring the chain zone. And while they do that, let's pause five seconds to allow our ABC stations to tell you who they are. This is KETV, Channel 7, Omaha. I don't know if that's the old left foot, right foot gig or not, but he put his left foot down and looks to me <laughs> like he's marked it somewhere in between the 12 and 13. And he did, and it is the first down. 12.27 to go in the second quarter. Last year, the Washington Huskies, this is what they did in the Pac-10. They were dominant. In fact, the Huskies dominated the entire Pac-10, averaging over 30 points every time they won a game in the Pac-10. Over it, pitches it to Barry, and Barry got a block on the turn. 
A good block from Malamala again, who was rolling around, and also the pulling guard, uh, Rungan. Raymakers on the tackle. All close to the 18 yard line. Pick up the flag, no penalty. The speaker system uh, within the stadium, which the referee works from, is not working. It's been a bad day all over the country for referees, Mike, I think. Jones in motion, give the ball to Barry. Barry trying to get outside, turns inside the 20, dives, and he may have another first down. It'll be close. They may need the chains for this one. Aaron Pierce was upfield, throw to block. Malamala showed up more and more here in leading the running game for Washington. That big tackle. It is a first down. They need a good running game, Keith, because you cannot put the pressure on the uh, the young sophomore Hobart Billy Joe. He had a good game his first game, but you cannot put him on the road in a hostile crowd in this situation. And expect hey, go out and win the game for us. You got to have some uh, running yards. Bino Bryant checks back into the backfield now. He is the single back for the Huskies. He's got the ball on a little tailback draw. Pops out of there. First down, Washington up across the 40, near the 40-yard line. They're going to mark him short of it at the 39. He was a half a whisker away from a real big game. He just popped out of there, didn't he? Yep. First arm tackle didn't do it. He was gone. Bryant is only 180 pounds, but he's a very sturdy, tough 180 when he's fresh. But he cannot take the pounding. Look at Nebraska, what they did in the Big 8 last year defensively. Five nice plays. Washington picked up 38 yards here in this possession. And whistle stop them on that one. <laughs> Movement in the Washington offensive line. Clock shows 11.05 first half. Nebraska seven, Washington nothing. That's the fourth penalty. And 40 yards on the Huskies. Penn State leading BYU 10-7. And of course, last Saturday night at the Coliseum in Los Angeles, we saw Penn State get shocked. Southern California suffered their second shock of the season today. Hobart back to throw. Swings it out. They set up the screen out there for Beto Bryant, but Bryant and the uh, would-be blockers are not together. In between them are big fellows wearing red. And David White made the tackle. up a first down for Washington at the Nebraska 39-yard line. Curtis Cotton saved the touchdown. Mario Bailey very wisely was looking for help over there from Beano Bryant, and he almost got it. That time, Nebraska came in, went man-to-man -man underneath, and they're just not quick enough. The, the secondary and the linebackers right there is number five getting away from that's uh, Cotton, number nine. The Washington receivers just too quick. On first down, Hobart turns and gives it to Bryant, and Bryant pops out of there again. Pino Bryant dives inside the 25 and bounces down at the 23. Good blocking up front for Bino. He's doing it. Take a look at the offensive line. 75 is Kennedy. Center is uh, Cunningham, number 79, blocking on 73. Newton, big hole up the middle. This is the man they want to get the ball to. Good speed, fastest man on the team. 4-3 speed. Three wide outs to the top of the picture now on first down. Hobart goes with it hard. Bullet is good to the 10. The man falls down inside the 10. Curtis Gaspard, number 17. It'll be first down and goal to go, Washington. 
Well, take a look at the outside receiver. He's going to come down and hook to the inside. Everybody else is going to clear out. He's going to be wide open on the inside. First down passing, a great time to pass. The receivers, flare control, help out, and a nice throw. A lot of receivers open for Washington. First and goal from the nine. Quarterback draw, Hobart. Touchdown, Husky. He caps a 98-yard drive. Moe has put on a white shirt. of a quarterback that can run and both teams on the field today have that. Eric Bjornsson backup quarterback has the high snap go right between his fingers. Travis Hansen comes back to cover it and the extra point is missed. That was a bad snap. That could be a big play all night long too. Bruce Bailey is the snapper, and Bruce, number 88, is going to let that one get away. Here's your touchdown. Quarterback draw. Watch the block on Anderson, 48. And he's just going to run away. Big play. Sunday. Bruce Bailey walking off his disappointment. Billy Joe Hobart in that drive, three for three in passing, 41 yards, including the run for the touchdown from a nine yards up. Nate Turner and Tyrone Hughes will be the deep people here for Nebraska. Hughes is 33 and Turner 22. And Travis Hansen will kick it off. Nebraska still leading seven to six. That was an impressive 98-yard move by the Washington Huskies. Big time. Short kick goes to about the 13. Hustling on down the field is Tommy Smith. And Tommy Smith takes Tyrone Hughes' legs away from him. Let's go back to that touchdown, Keith. It's a good call. It was man-to-man -man coverage. These, these uh, defensive backs are covering these people. These two safeties are going to split and go to the outside. This linebacker has his tight end. Nobody has a quarterback as he's going to go in right in between them. Nobody is assigned to cover the quarterback. A play that is called at the right time. Everybody has their backs turned away. Nobody assigned to the QB. Mickey Joseph comes in at quarterback now for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, his first appearance in the ball game. He is considered by some the better passer. He is quite good on the option as well, but not as big as Keith and McCann. Derek Brown is the eye back, and he carried on that last play. Mickey Joseph is a senior from Marrero, Louisiana, at 5'10 and 180. Joseph's the better runner, not the better thrower. I mean, this kid, this kid can run the option. He's faster afoot than McCant, but <laughs> not as sure. big and strong. That's for sure. I'm still struggling with the pollen. <laughs> 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 He was a starter all of last year, was Joseph. Got hurt in the last game of the year against Oklahoma. Didn't play in the bowl game. Started off the year the number one quarterback. Third down and four for Nebraska. Joseph going to the outside. Throws his pass. The pass is incomplete. And he got some pressure from Donald Jones, number 48. Jones forcing him to get rid of the ball before he really wanted to. And so they'll have to punt again. Now Tom Osborne showing some concern because with this big crowd roaring and his team all pumped up, they pretty well owned the first quarter, but now uh, the Washington Huskies have started to assert themselves in that 98-yard march for the touchdown. Mino Bryant back to return the kick. Mike Stiggy is fifth punt of the night, the last one with the win with 68 yards. Bino Bryant backed up and gives him 50 this time. 55 yards between the two. This is a mile high into the night sky and Bryant showing very good concentration is able to make the fair catch. You got a flag thrown over on the far side of the field. That was a 50 yard punt. No return obviously on the fair catch.
clipping. It's against Nebraska. That's unusual for you the punting team. Yeah. Call but, but unless he made the wrong call, unless he pointed the wrong way, you know. And Tom say, wait a minute, we clipped? Come here, I want to talk about that. Yeah, he's changed it. Yeah. Now. He's going back the other way. <laughs> Still stands as a 50-yard punt. 7.55 to go in the first half. They're debating now is exactly where they want to put the ball. The ball is in the possession of Washington. In case that's wandered through your mind. Dean O'Brien made his fair catch back in, around the 26, 27 yard line. And that's where your penalty is going to be assessed from. It's tough enough to win on the road, Keith, without turning the ball over or committing senseless fouls and penalties. In case you wonder, well, under the new rule, you know, that could have been gone the other way, but the clipping occurred way upfield, far beyond the point of possession. That's why the penalty was marked off from the point of possession, the line of scrimmage, not the spot of the foul. And it comes back to the 13-yard line, and there the Huskies will go to work as uh, Bino Bryant is in at tailback and carries up to about the 16 for a pickup of three yards. Gain of three, second down, seven coming up. ABC Sports will be at Soldier Field Monday night for our NFL presentation. Chicago Bears hosting the New York Jets. That's Mike Singletary right there. Will Baylor Bear. Bears are three and oh. The Baylor Bears are pretty good this year, too. Billy Joe Herbert is pursued and brought down just about the line of scrimmage by Mike Anderson. But ABC's Monday Night Football will be on the air at 9 Eastern time. Jets, Field in Chicago. Jets gave Buffalo a scare last week. Almost had them. Yep. The uh, Monday Night guys may have to rest. You know, <laughs> they, they had work today, them today, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> Show them how, how easy college football is. Tell you the well, toughest thing is people every week. they snap the ball a little bit quicker in between play from one play to the next. Third down and five. Hobart back. Looks got a man. Going to be enough for the first down as Mario Bailey makes the catch at the 13. I mean that's the 23. And I don't know if I called it too soon or not. He had to get precisely to the 23 yard line. Here's what they're doing right here, man to man. The two receivers outside clear out, and man coverage is just going to break to the outside. Hobart flushes out a little bit. Strong arm gets it out there. Didn't get his first down. Didn't get it. Nope. Corey Dixon drops back to return for Nebraska. And uh, Billy Joe Hobart is your punter. Gets it up high. Dixon first acceptance of the ball. He handles it all right at the 38. He can fly. And he is caught. And I mean, it's a good thing Hillary Butler got a piece of him because he might still be running. 39 yard punt. Inside your smooth running engine is a torture chamber. And under these grueling conditions, only one leading motor oil the world's toughest requirements for viscosity breakdown, Castrol. Castrol provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol. After all, why make things tougher on your engine? Castrol GTX, engineered for today's smaller cars. It was a good day for ideas. Plans for a sidewalk cafe were finalized. A river walk was proposed. And someone had the vision to bring luxury and romance back to train travel. Keep those ideas coming, and we'll keep making them look their best. Laser Jet Printers from Hewlett Packard. 
Bulletin from Chevy Truck. Now get $1,000 cash back on every new 1991 Chevy full size. The best cash back offer on America's best selling pickup. Now through September 25th, $1,000 on every new 1991 Chevy full size pickup. Every half ton, three quarter ton, one ton. Every two wheel drive, four wheel drive. All with $1,000 cash back. You must take retail delivery from dealer stock by September 25th. See your Chevy dealer for details and get $1,000 cash back now. Downtown Lincoln, Nebraska, the capital city. In case you don't know, the Nebraska state legislature is unicameral. The only one house legislature remaining in the nation. Oh. Nebraska's best starting possession point of the entire ball game by some 20 yards as Keithan McCann is back at quarterback and he just drilled a shot to John Bustick. And the pickup of uh, some seven or eight yards for the Cornhuskers. So look at, there's a look at uh, Johnny Mitchell, one of the uh, tight ends, three or four good ones. He has six catches on the year, two for touchdowns. Last year he had 11 catches, seven of which were for touchdowns. So he is their big play guy. If they're going to get a big play. It'll probably come to Johnny Mitchell. Second down and two. McCant gives it to the eye back. Derek Brown and Brown will have the first down as he pops it to the Washington 39. You uh, saw a moment ago in those numbers that Washington had possessed this quarter, but now the Cornhuskers flared it up again. Here's Jack. Keith, until this series, of course, as you could see, it looked as if the offensive line of the Nebraska Cornhuskers was not getting off the ball properly. But Tom Osborne took him over to the side during that last series of downs and diagrammed the plays. He was very upset with the fact that they weren't blocking properly. He took them point by point through the steps through a series of plays for this next offensive series. That's the first first down in five possessions. Tomorrow night, Premier Week continues on ABC with the all-new season premiere of Life Goes On, America's Funniest Home Videos, and America's Funniest People, plus the world premiere movie, The Untold Story of Marilyn Monroe's First Husband, Marilyn and Marie. All tomorrow night on ABC. A 7-6 to six ball game with the temperature going down now, and ultimately we'll get to the low 40s or possibly the high 30s, the weatherman says. So autumn is in the offing in middle America. Last week at this time, Tom Osborne had about a 35-point lead and had his third team on the field. In fact, the last two weeks, beat Utah State and Oklahoma State by big numbers. They knew it wouldn't be that easy here tonight. Jim Lambright just brought his entire defensive unit to the sideline, and he and the defensive coaches had a serious conversation with him, so let's see what they've cooked up. As McCant rolls out, gets some heat, Hoffman's after him, Hoffman's got him. Hoffman gets in behind the line of scrimmage at the 44-yard line. Second time McCant has been sacked in the ball game tonight, and it brings up the second down and 14. That big Lance Lundberg that's blocking out the view. <laughs> He's 6'4", 305 from Wausau, Nebraska. Got some depth on that offensive line. Oh, they really do. They got six tackles around 300 pounds. Not much there for the eye back. They swarm it. Nebraska's option will drive you crazy. Any option will drive you crazy. And Don James in our conversation yesterday at this emphatic point about the option. Everybody knows that the option is still the hardest play defending us. I don't care what they put up. The hardest play is the option. And they've got ways to run option weak, option strong. But they've also got a way to take the onside guard, the fullback, and, and the lead back and get three guys in front of the quarterback on option. And we haven't figured out a way to break all that down and get to the quarterback. McCant back. There's the first fake. Wants to go deep with it. Goes for Bostic in the corner. He's got it. Touchdown, Nebraska. Bostic beats Bailey. That's a kick from Bellevue, Washington, across the lake from the university who just burned his hometown team. That should never happen. 
Yankees on third and 13. Bennett for the try. Here's good. That makes that missed point by Washington look tough now, 14 to 6. Bailey got lost. Bailey got lost. Well, it was, it was a run formation. Third and 13. Two tight ends. Here's one and here's the other. All of these guys are looking for a run. Now, what have you got left? You've got these two guys out here playing man to man. He's just going to come down, break to the inside, and go deep to the outside. That's the respect that Washington has, even on third and 13, for the run of Nebraska. Give credit to McCant. He gets deep, and Bostic gets open. 42 yards on the play. That'll get him some boo hiss when he goes home to Valley. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> right. Big play. McCann. He knows he's got him one on one. He's like a cork and white cap, didn't he? Tommy Smith and Walter Bailey are deep. That's a very short kick. It's taken by Smith. Tommy Smith, big, strong guy, 6'2", 210 from Lancaster. California is hammered. But he delivers some punishment of his own as he brings it up the field. And the Huskies now trailing by eight. At halftime, we have the potential halftime report. Roger and Coach Bo Schimbeckler will have the news, scores, and highlights from around the country and the conversation with Florida State head coach Bobby Bowden. Headed for his big one next Saturday at noon with the Michigan Wolverine, which you'll see here on ABC. 27-yard line, Hobart back. Throws it underneath. Orlando McKay. First down up near the 45-yard line. If one of those other two people in the center of the field had peeled back, McKay might have scored. But they didn't, and he's down at the 44. Washington now, Keith, into the win, has gone to the shorter possession-type passes or the slants because of that win. Try to catch it short and let the receivers run with it. Over it. That's intercepted. Second one of the night. Tyrone Leggett. Intended for Curtis Gaspard. Penalty flag back up field. Well, let's see what that's about. Let's see this flag up here. It is declined. Nebraska takes the ball. Take a look from behind the defense. Hover looks to his left the whole way. He throws it to the open spot, but Gaspard doesn't get in there. If he would have hooked into the inside area where he was supposed to, the ball was thrown there. You know, quarterbacks, he throw to spots in open areas, and he was thrown to the open area. That was an easy, easy interception by Leggett. Calvin Jones shows up now. He's 5'11", 205-pound redshirt freshman from Omaha, and he's a little bigger and stronger than Derrick Brown. Maybe not quite as fancy, but he'll hit you a lick. Keithan McCant runs away from the pressure. He'll run it out of bounds. Steve Empman involved in the play. He's an outstanding player. Was the co-defensive player of the year in the Pac-10 last year. He is just a real load, a like a raging bull out there. Grew up on a farm. Says he'll go back to the farm once he uh, finishes his NFL career. Finishes his NFL <laughs> career is right. <laughs> says you'll never get. He says it's in my blood. I'll always go back. Second down and eight. McCant underneath. Bostic. I would think the Huskies would dearly love to paint his helmet. He gets a little sassy when he gets up from that one. 
Washington won the Rose Bowl last year. Nebraska not impressed by the Rose Bowl winners over the years. Third down and five for the Cornhuskers. Pressure coming from the weak side. The pass is thrown short and caught by Nate Turner. So they do use the wing back occasionally in their passing attack. And Turner slips out there by himself and picked up the first down. The defensive back Bailey was so far off of him. It was just a quick out five or six yards and out. I think these corners for the um, the Huskies are a little bit uh, afraid of being burned. They've been burned uh, a couple times a night, and they were some passes open a couple weeks ago. McCann back to throw has very good protection. Now it breaks down a little bit. But the Husky linebacker that penetrated on the defensive end, Andy Mason, was not quick enough to contain him. Well, McCant just stepped away from him and moved the ball upfield. Well, he was going. He wanted a big play to Mitchell. It's tied in. And they weren't about to have any. Here's Mitchell right here. He's going to go straight down the field, and two guys will lock on to him. Play action toward the uh, middle line of scrimmage, trying to hold everybody. Mitchell with 4-6 speed. He's the one that's caught seven touchdown, nine touchdown passes and 17 receptions in a year and a half. Second down and six. Here goes the big guy, Calvin Jones. And Jones blows through the hole and down to the Washington 36 and a Cornhusker first down. Edmund is 90, Talele is number eight. Garrett is 80. Just a crack in there, just a crease. There aren't going to be any big holes in there this week. You know, Tom Osborne doing a great job of calling the plays. Mixing uh, run and pass, going on first down, short and deep. McCant down, back behind the line of scrimmage. That's the third time, and this time, Andy Mason got his man, number 13. So the loss is back outside the 40 to the 43. This defense will do that to you. They'll make you look bad. They blitz a lot. They'll make some, uh, make you look bad, embarrass you, some negative plays, but they'll also give up some big plays, which they've done here tonight. Nebraska calling the timeout has one remaining at one minute and 15 seconds left to play in the first half, and the Cornhuskers are leading 14 to 6. Osborne, who uh, had some uh, heart trouble earlier this year, Paul Lanky Phillip, was a flanker with the 49ers for a year, then with the Redskins, and then went to coaching with Bob Devaney. Bob Devaney announcing that he's going to retire in 1993. And uh, well, forever and a day, his shadow will be on this university. Uh -huh. Did you know that General John J. Pershing was the math teacher here at the University of Nebraska? No, I didn't know that. And Charles Lindbergh learned to fly here. Here's the long looping pass downfield. It is intercepted by Dana Hall. So this time, McKent looking deep. Couldn't get it all the way downfield to Tyrone Hughes and Hall at 6-3 made the turn in his black jacket and made the interception. Be to the right side and let's give some credit to Dana Hall who went out with that rib injury earlier, put on the flag jacket and came back in, seized the ball all the way and makes the interception. He had three pickoffs last year and that's his first one. Wind does not always help carry a projectile either. Sometimes it'll knock it down. And I think it did in that instance. So the Huskies, with two timeouts remaining, will go to the ball at uh, first down on the eight-yard line, and Bino Bryant will work his way out near the 11 for a short pickup. And one minute, and now we're inside one minute. Double numbers. You see a lot of 
same number, but you see it on opposite sides of the ball. Like Dana Hall wears five and Mario Bailey wears five. One's defense, one's offense. This is Bryant. Big hole. Right side. Outside he goes. First down, Husky. At the 28-yard line. Half a minute to go. Chains are being moved. The clock stops. And Washington going without a huddle. Well, their attitude is here. If we move the ball down the field, we'll stop it. But if not, we just want to run it out. Bryant has 75 yards on seven carries. Billy Joe Hobart's pass to the sidelines. The pass is good to Matt Jones, and Jones gets out of bounds to kill the clock after a nine-yard pickup. The key factor here for Hobart is you're going into the win, and you're just before halftime. No big mistakes. If we can get it down and maybe get a shot at the field, go fine. But the, the critical thing is, and the thing foremost in your mind is, no mistakes. He's already had two interceptions in the first half. Second and one. Down the middle, Bailey's there. First down, that'll stop your clock again at the Nebraska 48-yard line. You've got uh, 13 seconds to go in the first half. Looks like they may take a timeout here. They will. They have one remaining. So Hobart comes to the sideline to talk. Hobart's a big, strong kid, has a strong arm, likes to throw the ball, is a more of a gambler type. Mark Brunel, the quarterback that played for him last year, was the Rose Bowl MVP. There's a look at him right there on the left. Had knee surgery in the spring, serious knee surgery, had an anterior cruciate repaired, is already back. He should be ready to play in a couple of weeks. Billy Joe Hobart, who Brunel won the job from last fall, and uh, led um, Brunel led him to the Rose Bowl. Uh, Hobart's got his chance now. I like this kid. He says uh, he's, uh, he's big, he's bold, he's brash. He says he says I like to take control. He says I like to yell. He says I like to cuss. I like to spit. I like to get things going. Well, two interceptions are going to bother him for a while before he gets back to the supper table. He gets it off. Gaspard makes the catch down at the 31, and that kills your clock with seven seconds to play. And the Huskies spend their last time out. Now they got to make the call. Do you go ahead and send in Travis Hansen for a field goal try with the football mark down at the 31-yard line? A lot of times, just before half of the end of the ball game, the center of the field will be open because everybody's playing zones, first of all. And secondly, they're playing so deep. Travis Hansen has not tried a field goal in the real world this season. This would be a 48-yarder, and it is into the win. How much? I can't tell you, because uh, up where we are, on top of the stadium, it's howling. Down on the inside of the stadium, it's swirling. Last season, Hansen was three out of four in field goals between 40 and 49. His brother Jason's a long American over at Washington State. And he has a huge leg. Comes from good stock. Yep. So here is the younger of the brothers. Bruce Bailey is in to snap it. Last time Bruce snapped it, it didn't work too well. Bjornsson's going to hold it. Now Nebraska trying to chill him a little bit. They call a timeout. Nebraska spending its uh, last one. The Huskies don't have one either, and it doesn't really matter because you've only got seven seconds to play in the half. First quarter belongs to the Corn Huskies. The second quarter pretty much belonged to the Washington Huskies except for one big play. Exactly, and that's the type of defense Washington plays. They're going to make you look bad, or they're going to give up some big plays, and Tom Osborne does a good job of calling the plays. And Don James was saying, you know, the thing he was concerned about in the Stanford game, the first game they played a couple of weeks ago, was that Stanford had a bunch of people open. The quarterback didn't hit them. They've connected uh, here tonight. All right, let's 
see if they can make this work. 49 yards from the, where they put it down. That's the 39 yard line. Nope. I don't know if it was a good hold or not because he didn't get much on that ball at all. He just kind of squatted and went into the end zone. Nowhere near the goal post. Snap was a tad high. I think it was down all right. He just tried to overkick it into that win and just kind of kicked a knuckleball. Hit it probably too much in the middle of the ball. So it's no good. And the Huskies are turned away. Nebraska will get one snap with three seconds to go. And the Cornhuskers lead by a score of 14 to 6. Oh, look at this. McCant throws. And it goes to Calvin Jones. And Jones is going to get a first down. He gets a nice chunk of yardage to go into his first half total. But the play is done for the first half. And we'll be back with our halftime activities after this message and the word from our ABC station. ABC's College Football. Brought to you by Honda. Maker of fine quality automobiles. Test drive a Honda at your local dealer today. And by UPS. Now offering 10.30 a.m. guaranteed overnight air delivery. The two quarterbacks prowling the sidelines. On the right, McCant for Nebraska. On the left, Hobart for Washington. Washington will receive the kickoff of Tommy Smith and Walter Bailey deep. Byron Bennett will kick it off. That's Smith on the right, 15. Bailey, 23 on the left of your picture. 14 to 6. Nebraska leads. Washington ranked fourth coming into the game. Nebraska ranked ninth. It is Smith at the 12. And out to the 23, and there the Huskies will go to work. There you have time statistics. Uh, take a look at the total yardage. Washington with 270 yards. Nebraska with almost 200. The two turnovers belong to Washington, only one for Nebraska. Penalties, 55 yards for Washington and only five for Nebraska. Pino Bryant is the tailback. Matt Jones, the fullback. Over. Pulls the trigger. The wide outs are Bailey and McKay. And off goes to Jones. He pops out of there. Matt Jones from Portland, Oregon, blows his way to the 37-yard line on the first down. The Huskies open with Cunningham at center. The guards are Rondon and Caligas, Kennedy and Malamala. All the tackles pierce the tight end. The wideouts we gave you, that's the way the Huskies start the second half. Only change being Bryant is your tailback instead of Perry. Crowd roaring at Memorial Stadium. Bryant trying to change his pace. Leg buckled under him, he goes down. For a loss of about two yards as Mike Anderson takes him down. Nebraska opens with Raymakers, Engelbert, and the defensive bunch, Perella is back in there. Perella was the man who was shaken up. You see the offensive leaders for Washington with Bryant totaling 75 yards in the first half. Most of that yardage for Washington came in the second quarter. Second down and 12. Over. Goes good to Jones out of the backfield. The fullback hammers into one of the Nebraska defensive backs, Leggett. Tries to put him on his numbers, but couldn't quite do it. And I think he's a little bit short of his first down. Let's take a look at the defensive leaders for Nebraska. Anderson and uh, Carmer with six tackles apiece. Leggett and Will Height with one interception. Keith, I think it's interesting to note that Washington had the choice in the second half and decided to receive, but Nebraska chose to kick into the wind, thereby getting the win for themselves in the fourth quarter. Very important. Little bit short. Now let's check in with Jack. He can talk to Don James before he came out here, and he said offensively, although they didn't produce a lot of points, he was pleased with their efforts. Defensively, he couldn't say the same, though. He said, we've got to contain the quarterback, keep him back in the pocket. 
That's what he feels is most important and be the decisive factor in this second half. First thing he's got to do is put a touchdown on the board and get back in the hunt and quiet the crowd a little bit here in the second half. It'll be third down and short. Leaving about a foot. Bryant is the single back. Hobart slips over to the right side and rides behind Cunningham and Caligus for the first down. Ball will be advanced up to around the 48. And the Huskies will start a new series. Lincoln Kennedy, 75 there, is 6'7", 325, a junior from San Diego. Aaron Pierce, the tight end, is the man hurt on the field for Washington. A big tight end, caught a couple of passes, 6'5", and 240, and they're working on a leg. Scoring summary in the ball game, Nebraska broke on top as Derek Brown, the eye back, capped off a, a very impressive drive with a 27-yard dash for the score. Washington answered as Billy Joe Hobart ran a quarterback draw up the middle, but the extra point on a high snap was missed, and that's where we are right now, 14 to 6, and Pierce is walking off the field. So that looks like it might be good news as Aaron Pierce is able to walk off the field, and Mark Bruner, who is a true freshman from Aberdeen, Washington, 6'5", 230, comes into the game. They really like this one. Bruner. No remaining back as Bryant comes outside to the left. Hobart pumps it up. Got Bailey down the middle. Bailey is at the Nebraska 28-yard line brought down by Steve Carmer. He's a dynamite player, Mario Bailey. They spread the field that time. No back in the backfield, Keith, and they just spread them out. No backs back here. Here's Bailey right. He's going to go straight down the field. Now watch as the secondary gets spread out, covering the entire width of the field, looks off the free safety, and a great play there. Call it the 29-yard line. First down, Huskies. Ball is handed away to Matt Jones, the fullback, and Jones is down at the 26, and let's go to Roger Twebel. BYU fumbled the second half kickoff and watch Jerry Collins five yard touchdown run will cap a five play 27 yard drive and Penn State leads BYU 17 to 7 and what about this score Utah leads Oregon 24 3 in the second quarter let's go back to Keith oh boy this has been a rough day and a lot of unexpected folks here they come Trips blitz on Pass high. He had Bailey. Bailey was in front of Tyrone Bird. And Hobart missed him, and he's now 10 of his last 12. Just overthrew it. Nebraska coming out of their conservative uh, bend but don't break uh, zone defense. Came up, put some pressure on him. Hobart saw it in his, in his anxiousness to complete the pass. Just overthrew it. Ball is resting at the 26-yard line where it is third down and seven for the Huskies. And again, they've got three wideouts up there. Hobart passes away, and he missed it. The last two passes were not very well thrown. Uh, Gaspard appeared to be the man in front of Will Height. But again, a trailing wind sometimes can cause you just as much trouble as throw it into it. And there was good coverage, Keith. Uh, the Nebraska secondary with good coverage, close man-to-man, -man, and uh, there was really nobody open downfield. So Travis Hansen is in to try a 43-yard field goal. The field goal tries and the extra points have been an adventure tonight for Washington. They get it down this time, and Hansen nails it right down the highway. At 12.27 to go in the third quarter, it is now a 14-9 ball game, still Nebraska. <laughs> it's football season in Lincoln. They're having a time. And Travis Henson is putting it down on the tee to kick it off. Tyrone Jones and Nate Turner deep to receive it. 
Hughes is 33 and Turner is 22. And somebody's going to have to hold that thing because the wind keeps blowing it off the tee. And Mario Bailey comes up to it. I don't know if that's Bailey or Hall. Somebody's holding it. That should go to the end zone and beyond. It goes back into the middle of the end zone, and Hughes will not return it. And Nebraska will bring it out first down at the 20. First down, 10 at the 20 yard line. Travis Hansen is holding his back as he goes back to get the tee. Let's see what happens to him when he comes off. And he looks all right now. He was holding his back. All right, here comes Nebraska. McKent. Brown is the eye back. Lance Lewis is the fullback. Pitch it out to Brown. Coverage was there, but Delaney missed the tackle. Delaney had him in his sights, number eight, and the Paxton just simply missed him. As the elusive Derek Brown turned up field. And he made something out of that play. He made six yards. They are working on uh, on the Washington place kicker Travis Hanson. He did something to his back. McCant turns it to Brown again, and boom. How do you do, Messrs. Impman and Rogers? Tyrone Rogers, the middle guard for the Washington Huskies, played against Nebraska as an Oklahoma Sooner down in Norman in 1988. Third down, four. Nebraska's offense opens with Scott at center, Jensen and Shields the guards, Wiegert and Borboom uh, the tackles. Tight end is Mitchell, and he's been quiet. The rest of it we gave you. McCant back. Screen. Throws it underneath for a screen. He's got two blockers in front and gets the first down and gets a big play all the way to the 45-yard line. Nice call by Tom Osborne. It works against zone, but not against man-to-man -man because the man is up there in his face. But this time, uh, Washington dropped off in a zone. There's Hoffman out there against the screen. That's Jensen, number 69, with a nice block and a first down. McCann throwing on the run just beyond the reaching hands of Hughes. Incomplete. Here's Roger again. Thank you very much, Keith. Georgia at Alabama. And Siren Stacy will go around the left side four yards of the touchdown run. It was set up by Stacy's 20-yard run two plays earlier. 7-0 Alabama in the fourth. And in Baton Rouge right now, Vanderbilt leads LSU 14-13. Let's go back to Keith and Lincoln. It is not a happy time right now in uh, Baton Rouge, the town of the Red Stick. McCann under pressure. Throws it away. The offensive leaders first half. McCant was a 7 of 11 for 104 yards. Pretty good for a non-passing quarterback. Brown led the rushers. Bostic with three receptions and a touchdown. Defensively for Washington, Hoffman led in tackles. Hill had the one interception, and Edmund was right there also. He pressured uh, McCann on that last screen pass. Chico Freire has been kind of quiet tonight. It won't hurt much for him. Hillary Butler's been playing fun in Chico's place. But Chico's back in there now, linebacker for Washington. This is Brown. He ran right through a tackle. Rogers had a piece of him, but couldn't hold him. And so he goes from no gain to about eight yards because he broke Rogers' tackle. From La Habra, California. It's an incredible thing to me that uh, Californians go all over the country to play, and so many of them keep being told they can't go to school at certain universities in California. Stiggy is in the punt. He's had a pretty good night in this windy night. That's another fairly good kick under extreme pressure. And he gets that knuckleball floating around, and it's fair caught at the 21-yard line. High point lead for the Cornhuskers. Riders.
games in one week. Should note that that 49 yard had missed there was into a 30 mile an hour wind. Travis Hansen had a slight muscle spasm on the right side of his back as he came off the field. And they've apparently rubbed it out. He's okay as the Huskies come up. First down at their own 21. They trail 14 to 9 to the home team, and Vino Bryant will pick up a couple of yards, and that's all as the defensive right side of that Nebraska line just zeroed in on him. The backers, Anderson and White, did most of the damage to him. LSU has come back to lead Bandy 16 to 14 in the fourth quarter in an SEC game. But there were indeed some surprises today. Second down, Nebraska goes to their nickel package. Four down linemen and six defensive backs. And they run it with Pino Bryant. And he crosses the 30. And they'll be looking at third down and short. Again, Bryant was uh, just a whisker from popping out of there for a big game. He's got 82 yards on the night on 10 carries. We see a late substitution. Nebraska trying to get their regular base defense in. Huskies Matt Jones wedges ahead for the first down. I don't know if they had 10 on or not, but they got enough in there to hold that play. But not until Jones, with a surge behind Malamala and Caligas, was able to get the first down. I think well, that's the problem when you switch from one type of defense to the other. They were trying to get get out of their nickel package back into their base defense. And there was there was they were disorganized to say to, to give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, a little fly pattern down the field would have been worth yeah. something there, wouldn't it? <laughs> They were squawking at George Perlis today too at Notre Dame for what he was uh, he was running his defenses. Uh, well, the one the one time I saw it looked like he was debating whether or not to go for it on fourth down, and he says, "Oh no, we can't." So he put the guy in there to punt, and and they were squawking about that. That looked like an honest an honest thing. On first down and ten for the Huskies, they put Bryant in motion, which means pass because Hobart doesn't have anybody behind him. His pass is off. The intended receiver Gaspard is on the ground. He's over there with Curtis Cotton and uh, he fell down. So that's an incomplete forward pass. And the game summary reads this way. As you see the score at the top, you see where Washington has made its mistakes. And that uh, Nebraska's passing game has been pretty good tonight. Derek Brown, the eye back for the Cornhuskers, and Vino Bryant, the tailback for Washington, both having big nights. Jay Barry is now in a tailback for Washington. Hobart takes it out of his belly, throws it down the middle of the field, and uh, Orlando McKay was the man in, for whom it was intended. He had double coverage, and Billy Joe was on his back. Well, the, the reason Billy Joe was on his back because they had their nickel package in again, putting some pressure on him up front. Anytime they think they're going to pass, they're coming with it. Check out these two defensive linemen right here. They're going to crisscross. A 90 is going to be more that's going to come around and put some pressure on the quarterback. As the 90 is more at 6'6. Don't give the quarterback time to look downfield. Third and 10. was tipped I think at the line of scrimmage. I think somebody got a hand on it. It might have been Engelbert but the ball fluttered down in the vicinity of Gaspard incomplete and it is fourth down. Should have hit him. He had him open. So the Huskies have to give it up with Hughes and Dixon deep. Dixon is one and Hughes 33. Dixon's a redshirt freshman. A real burner from Dallas. Hobart doing the punting. Kicks it to Dixon at the 25. He gets a crack. Look out. Doug gets into a little hood button, a head button gig up there and he loses as he goes down very hard at the 44 yard line. 43 yard spot but a 19 yard return. 
We invested $100 million in the latest diagnostic equipment. And another $5 million a year training our expert technicians. seasons, Nebraska has been in the AP Top 20. Look at this. 267 out of 281 weeks. Do you know how long that is? Is that, is that unbelievable or what? Ooh. There's the man that's done it. And this man is, is, is hearing some, some rumblings from the fans and the area about... He spoiled them. Yeah, too boring. Wants some excitement. McCant coming down the line on the option play. Turns the corner. Penalty flag goes down. And number 39, Chico Fraley, is in his hip pocket and rides him down. Procedure call against the Cornhuskers. Nebraska has stopped its JV schedule after 35 years, playing five games normally. But they've had to give it up, lack of opposition and cost. They had a scrimmage out here yesterday afternoon. Take a look at how close this huddle is. About three steps away from the line of scrimmage. They do that every time. I think it's just to save the distance that the offensive line has to travel. They want to, they want them to lose any weight. They, they've bucked them up. Now they don't want to run them too much. Well, that's Boyd Epley's philosophy is uh, to bulk them up. You know, you go out and run, start running five miles, you know, you're just defeating your purpose. Yeah. You want explosiveness. That's against the Cornhuskers. Well, they have. The offensive line has, from last year, has added 23 pounds on the average per man and has increased their, their strength about 43 pounds. So Nebraska, one of the leaders in the country, probably, well, I know they have the biggest weight room. Uh, that, that thing is, what, 30,000 square feet? It's big. Here's a look at a rushing comparison. I just walked through it yesterday and felt better. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Ziegelbein moved the ball on an illegal snap that caused that procedure uh, penalty. That's a pitch back to the eye back. And that's pretty good pursuit right there on Derek Brown by Dave Huffman because Brown had some daylight in front of him. And he was cranking up the burners to get to it. And uh, Huffman knocked him down. It was an interesting graphic that Washington has has outrushed Nebraska. There's a look at Hoffman, 54, the leading tackler from last year. He's a good one. Second down, 15. McCant squares his shoulders and throws, and that's a dandy catch by Abdul Muhammad, the wingback, a true freshman from Compton, California. He's another speedster. He is a true freshman, one of three on the roster. Those uh, man carrying uh, seven Washington freshmen home for a three-day weekend uh, at a wreck on uh, on Friday, uh, Thursday night, I guess it was, scared everybody to death. Only one uh, is apparently seriously injured, that being Richard Washington. He's got to have some surgery. McCant. Turns up field, looked for his man. His intended receiver, Hughes, had stopped. And when McCant pulled the ball down, Donald Jones was right there. Jones plays what amounts to a defensive end position, though he's listed as an outside linebacker. Exactly right, Keith. And one of the things that James said, we have to contain. Contain. Look at him right now. He's containing. He's going way outside. Flips back to the inside. I mean, it was pretty wide, but he did force McCant to turn back up inside and finally made the tackle. Good play. And that's four times now that he is, uh, uh, the uh, quarterback has been stopped short of the line of scrimmage. 14 to 9 ball game. Nebraska leading. Fourth down. They kick it away. Stiggy. Stiggy puts it up into the, I mean, he got some air under that baby. It's fumbled back on the five yard line by Dino Bryant. Nebraska is claiming they've got the ball. Hold the phone. There I Pretty good uh, push, pushing and pulling match going on down at the bottom of that pile right now. Right, let is, that ball go. The ball was free. Nebraska does have it. First and goal, Nebraska. 49-yard punt. Bryant doesn't handle it, and the Huskers get it. Dino Bryant has 
caught a lot of these in his career. Now, it, now he fumbles and takes his eye off of it. The wind probably had a factor in this. Now just get on the ball. Get on the ball. He's not on it yet. He's going to come out to the bottom left, left of your screen. You may see it. You'll see it from this. Mike Anderson's going to get it. Yeah, it's going to come back out towards the back of his legs. It's going to slide outside. On first and goal, the Cornhuskers. And Derek Brown, touchdown. talked about early in the ball game the offensive and defensive lines number 90 Epman had a shot that time the offensive line of the Cornhuskers won the battle and a turnover turns into a touchdown in one play Bennett for the extra point it's good So, the Washington Huskies who live at the shadow of Mount Rainier may be looking at a mountain about that size as they trail 21 to 9. Well, here's another look. I think a better look at that fumble by Bryant. He's got plenty of time to fall on. The, uh, the defenders are four or five yards away. Look at him now. It just comes out. Now watch. Keep going. Keep running it. There at the end, the Nebraska player comes in from the right side. Sanderson. Yeah. You know, Washington, Keith, last year led the nation in turnover ratio. They took the ball away 23 more times than they gave it up. They lose this ball game. It'll probably be because of turnovers. That's the third one on the night and the second one that's turned into a touchdown. Well, it was poor judgment, I think, to try to take it on the five-yard line, isn't it? But normally, if you're inside the 10-yard line... Let it go. You let it go. I think the, the, the one that, that he kicked down here earlier in the game, where it ended up on the two-yard line, have influenced was in his mind, yeah. Napoleon Kaufman is in the ball game now with Walter Bailey to return this kick. He's a true freshman and a flyer. But it is... And he gets it out to about the 25-yard line. ABC's NFL presentation on Monday night will be from Soldier Field in Chicago with the New York Jets against the homestanding Chicago Bears at 9 Eastern time, 6 Pacific. Ditka's got him playing well, doesn't he? Yep. All right, Jones comes out. Gaspard goes in. Uh, let's see. Do we get Kaufman? No, he's out of there. Bryant comes back at tailback. So Bailey, McKay, and Gaspard are your trips to the bottom of the picture. Crowd coming up, chanting defense, defense, defense. Give it to Pino Bryant. And Bryant works his way through some heavy traffic and picks up about three yards. Well, you heard the crowd coming up hollering defense, and they are really into this game. Take a look at this graphic. They're 26 and 2 in the last five years, and one by an average of 33 points. Second down and seven. Colbert has all day, and now he's got some room to run. Throws and gets his first down. The pass is caught up across the 45-yard line. He was pretty close to crossing the uh, line of scrimmage, but it was a good play. Let's go back and take another look at that. Uh, look at the whites of his eyes. Didn't look it in. Nope. Didn't look it in. Looking for a hole to run. down Washington just over their own 45 hand it to the up man Jones and Jones is across midfield to near the Cornhusker 48 he's the 215 pound sophomore from Portland and playing well tonight Darius Turner who had been ticketed as the starter at fullback not been able to play so far this year because of back trouble 
Time winding along at four minutes to go in the third quarter, and Nebraska leading 21 to 9. They haven't announced the attendances yet. I wouldn't be surprised if we're not close to a record. I don't think there's an inch of space available. Blitzen. And Bryant bounces off one Nebraska man and bounces for about five or six yards before they bring him down. No, he did not. No. Here's a look at uh, the top ten. Top three were idle. Washington is in jeopardy of losing their ranking. Florida already lost to, to Syracuse. Tennessee barely won. Oklahoma and Clemson win. Nebraska is number nine in winning. And they stay that way, they'll move up. First down for the Huskies. Little throw underneath after bad pass. He threw it behind Bino Bryant. Bryant was on slanting in just behind the line of scrimmage, and Hobart threw a poor pass. But this will go in the books as the 178th home Second. stadium sellout. The seating capacity is 73-650. But uh, uh, the record average for the season was 76-342. And they're just short of it. 76 304. They're making, I think they're making more noise than they've ever made, though. I think you're right. Tailback Bryant again. And he gets into the traffic, and there he has Mr. Engelbert and company to deal with. And uh, his gain is about five. It's a shot of last year's starter who took him to the Rose Bowl, recovering from knee surgery. No way they'll put him in this ball game. He's two or three games away at, at best. He just started practicing with the team. Incredible recovery, though. Unbelievable. Just incredible. Jimmy Barry in at tailback now. Third down and five. Hobart's pass is away. Bailey has it. Bailey has the first down. He's brought down by Tyrone Bird. That's quite a track meet when those two corners and those uh, of Nebraska and those uh, two wideouts get going downfield. Well, here's Bailey here, and the other two receivers are just going to run off. He's just going to go down, make the first down, and break to the outside. Comes in motion, he gets inside. Now he gets a lot of room to the outside to run and just barely picks up the first down. Big series for Washington. That's Orlando McKay trying to set up a screen for him. And Nebraska read it perfectly and just ate him up. Darren Williams, a sophomore inside linebacker from Chicago. There he is. He's, he's a load. Again, uncovered. Little uh, quick screen. You see 75 uh, Kennedy coming out. They like this uh, Williams, Keith. 98. They think he is really going to be a star. Here. Yes, he weighs 250 pounds. Back He's up, still growing. Back up inside linebacker. He's going to be good. That one's going to the end zone. Bryant running under it. And it is incomplete. The coverage by Steve Carmer, who is from Oahu, Nebraska. Minute 43 remaining in the third quarter. And still a 12-point lead. And there's Baylor winning one reasonably comfortably. <clears throat> Alabama out 10 nothing now. Alabama lost to Florida last week. Florida went to Syracuse, got beat today. California leads Arizona. Golden Bears are pretty good. They're worth a look. They might be the second best team in the country. They can throw it. And they even believe they're the first best. Billy Joe's got a man. Touchdown. Orlando McKay and a penalty flag back up at the line of scrimmage. Oh, the rough home. A bad area for, uh, for the Husky fans. That's usually holding. What it is. No touchdown. are killing Don James and the Huskies. They had over 70 yards in penalties already. 
Nebraska was in an all-out blitz. Man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary. They picked it up. Holbert found the man. Look at, look at the bottom of your screen. Let's see if we can pick it up. Number 34. I can't tell from that picture, but uh, shot of the blitz being picked up. But I don't think that was it on the outside. Six penalties for 71 yards on the Huskies. Wipes out a touchdown. Over it. He's got some in the pocket. Dives for the 30-yard line. And they'll mark him just short of it. With the clock running at 120 to go in the third period. Well, that was a big touchdown to lose because that would have tightened everybody's belt a little bit. That's not to mention chin straps. And James knows that when you're on the road, a hostile crowd against a tough opponent, you cannot hurt yourself. Penalties, interceptions, fumbles. They're going to go on fourth down. Fourth and about what, nine, eight or nine? Eight. McKay's got it. And he's got a first down at the Cornhusker 15-yard line. Hobart's hot now. You see how thick his neck is? <laughs> I mean, he's burning. Watch the middle receiver. Number four is McKay. He's just going to let the inside receiver clear. Come to the inside. Man-to-man -man coverage. Big-time throw and a good catch. That play has been there virtually all night long hasn't always worked because at times the coverage has been exceptional at times they just simply haven't made the play. Line is back at tailback first down at Nebraska's 15 yard line. Give it to Bryant he splits him and scores touchdown so they get it anyway. And as we wind down to the end of the third quarter we have a ball game that is still very much a contest. What's the blocking here? The center, that's Cunningham, who's going to block the man over. It's going to be a huge hole. Was it on the outside? Six penalties for 71 yards on the Huskies. Wipes out a touchdown. Over it. He's got some in the pocket. Dives for the 30-yard line. And they'll mark him just short of it. With the clock running at 1.20 to go in the third period. Boy, that was a big touchdown to lose because that would have tightened everybody's belt a little bit. That's not to mention chin straps. And James knows that when you're on the road, a hostile crowd against a tough opponent, you cannot hurt yourself. Penalties, interceptions, fumbles. They're going to go on fourth down. Fourth and about what, nine, eight or nine? Eight. McKay's got it. And he's got a first down at the Cornhusker 15-yard line. Hobart's hot now. You see how thick his neck is? <laughs> I mean, he's burning. Watch the middle receiver. Number four is McKay. He's just going to let the inside receiver clear. Come to the inside. Man-to-man -man coverage. Big-time throw and a good catch. That play has been there virtually all night long hasn't always worked because at times the coverage has been exceptional at times they just simply haven't made the play. Bryant is back at tailback first down at Nebraska's 15 yard line. Give it to Bryant he splits him and scores touchdown so they get it anyway. And as we wind down to the end of the third quarter we have a ball game that is still very much a contest. What's the blocking here? The center, that's Cunningham, who's going to block the man over. It's going to be a huge hole right up the center of the uh, offensive line. We talked about the, the battle of the line of scrimmage. The big uglies, Keith, if you will. Yes, sir. At time won Sickle. by... <laughs> <laughs> that's a good touchdown for Washington. Big Bryant, character, character builder. Bryant's gone over 100 yards. He's got 112 now. 14 carries as Hanson knocks the extra point through there. And the score is now 21 to 16. And uh, here's Jackaroo. 
Keith, you were talking upstairs about the situation with the weight room here. The strength and conditioning room is 30,000 square feet, as we said, and it's a state-of-the-art facility. And it says by many, one of the reasons why the average offensive line weight gain this year has been 23.4 pounds. Another reason is Boyd Epley, who is the head of this strength and conditioning facility. He has changed over from an, ant, from an aerobic training method to an anaerobic training method. Now the difference, aerobic builds endurance. Anaerobic actually concentrates upon power in a short-term period. Now what he's done is he's produced this power for those offensive linemen in short spurts by combining endurance, heavy weight lifting, and a diet combined of high calories and low fat. He says that those are the primary reasons why the offensive linemen have been able to make such massive weight gains since this time last year. All right, Jack, thank you. That's quite a program. All right, the Huskers are back in the hut at 21 to 16. Save your energy, guys, you'll need it. Tell you what, Don James showed me something going for it on fourth and uh, eight or nine, making it. Long kick to the end zone. Hughes backs up, no return by Tyrone. Remember that Nebraska now is going to have the wind at their back in the fourth quarter. And right about in here, it becomes a, a contest of a lot of things. It becomes, first off, a contest of skill. Obviously. But somewhere down the road, it develops into discipline. It develops into something called will. That little intangible. Who wants it the most? That is so true, Keith. And the advantage has to go to Nebraska playing at home in front of their fans. Keith and McCann. Played well tonight. Gives it to Derek Brown. And the eye back picks up seven yards before they can bring him down. And the big guys for Washington have gone just about all the way in the defensive front. There's a little fervor around here tonight. It almost reminds me of Monday night football, the way the fans uh, waited around all day to get to this ball game. They're fired up. We'll be back with more action in our ball game between the Huskies and Huskers after this message and a word from our ABC station. seven-yard line for Nebraska, second down and three, and they're operating out of a power eye. The eye back, Derek Brown, surging ahead, and he's short of the first down. He's going to need the better part of two yards on third down. There's the, the corn husker. Kiffin. Keithan McCant gives it on the option to Derek Brown, and what a blow he took. Who's in the bottom of that? Chico Fraley. Chico Fraley, Fraley was right out there Ooh. with him. And he didn't get the first down. It looked like he was a cinch. Take a look at this. Nine guys at the line of scrimmage. Fraley is right here. Watch him run out and make the play. He runs. Good speed, gets blocked, but gets up, makes the initial hit. Powakoa is there. <laughs> That's a big play. Powakoa got him high. So it's fourth down, and Sticky is in the punt. Wins at his back. Didn't get all of it, still a good kick. Bryant at the 30, and down at the 31. 
So Washington first down at their own 31. Nebraska leading by five. Nebraska leading by five as the Washington Huskies come up to the line of scrimmage just short of their own 32 yard line first down and for those of you who have been watching BYU and Penn State that score incidentally 27 7 Penn State we are in a five point ball game with 13 39 to play Washington goes to the tight end Aaron Pierce and Pierce is across midfield first down Washington at the Nebraska 47 yard line number four Washington versus number nine Nebraska tight end Reese and straight up the field good protection for uh, Holbert throws it over the linebackers before the safety bird gets there that's an outstanding throw for a kid starting his second collegiate game Holbert is now 20 out of 36 for 251 yards Nebraska has led all the way in this ball game Dino Bryant the tailback is brought down after a yard pickup this is how the scoring has happened in the ball game. Nebraska to the lead on Derek Brown's 27-yard touchdown run. Nebraska dominated the first quarter. Washington dominated the second quarter, but only got six points, missing the extra point. And Washington dominated the play in the third quarter as well, but they only got three points out of that, and Nebraska got a touchdown to lead 21 to uh, nine, and now it is 21 to 16 as the Huskies responded in the closing seconds of the third quarter and down the middle the pass is caught by Matt Jones and a first down for Washington at Nebraska's 25 yard line and now the Huskies are moving in big chunks of real estate here's Jones right here he just got to jump inside the linebacker go straight up the field he spread him wide Man to man on the uh, outside linebacker. That's Travis Hill, number 93, and an excellent throw. I mean, throwing into a win. That's Tyrone Leggett leaving the field, a cornerback for Nebraska. Played an outstanding ball game, and he's out of there. And the Nebraska crowd of some 76,304 has suddenly gotten quiet. Now they wake up a little bit, calling for defense. Washington gobbling up the yardage all of a sudden. Bryant working in the middle, pops out of there. Vito Bryant inside the 10. First down, Huskies at the Husker eight-yard line. All of a sudden, Washington's offense just exploded down the field. It's the, it's the, it's the offensive line that is dominating the Nebraska line now. Pass protection and opening the holes. Holbert is throwing the ball magnificently and the offensive line is is opening the holes for the running game Bryant is the one back in the Washington set with trips at the top of the picture ball rolling around on the ground and the Huskies keep it as Aaron Pierce the tight end came back to get it and Washington dodges a bullet Turnovers have plagued them all night long. Second down, eight. He never got that ball. That ball was snapped into his leg. They watered this field down for our new viewers. They watered this field down early in the ball game or before the ball game as you see Pierce jump on the football to help the traction of it. It is wet on the field. It does not rain here. They do that every game. Ryan is out now. Jones is back in and uh, Billy Joe Hobart throws it down the middle. Touchdown! Orlando McKay and Washington has the lead for the first time tonight. And the House of Red grows quiet. Looks like they'll go for two. Well, right here is the man is is going to go right down in the middle of the field. Now watch as he throws the ball right in the center of the defense and nobody reacts to the football. Over reads him all the way. And the Nebraska player just standing around. McKay has had a huge night. Jones, Barry, Johnson in the backfield. They're going for two. A little fade to the corner. They rule him out of bounds. Drop the ball, Keith. Maybe both. They got lost I couldn't see him in the shadows over there but it doesn't work and it's a one-point ball game he's 
He's up. He's in. He's out. Where's the ball? His foot is in. Oh, he was in. Yeah. If we, Look, uh, you can't. You don't know whether he was juggling it or not. But uh, <laughs> he obviously it, didn't have control of it because they waved it off immediately. As we approach the 1992 Olympic Games, many are striving to be their best. They tackles third rack Michigan next Saturday on ABC Sports. The best is here. Here's the foundation for a pretty good conversation. It looks to me like he's got his extra point. Catches the ball, foots on the ground. Puts down, he's inbounds. The ball is stripped away from him after he comes down. Watch the official to the right side. We've already established he that he can't see it. it. He, he signals touchdown and then he sees the ball come out. He can't make the no. call because he can't see it. So he can't see through Pierce. He had possession, he had the ball. That should be two points. Yes, sir. That's a bad. Oh, somebody else should have helped that man. The kickoff is a very short, poor one, and a penalty flag is thrown, and Nebraska gets great field position out of it. I don't know what in the world happened, but uh, Hanson didn't kick it anywhere. He just popped it up. Now, maybe that bad back is bothering him, but uh, Nebraska owns the football at their own 40-yard line, and Washington is called for offside anyway. The Huskers don't want any part of that. Trailing by one point, they'll take it where they got it. He just tried to pop that ball up, Keith, down the middle of the field. Nebraska doesn't, Nebraska doesn't have, look at this, Nebraska doesn't have anybody in here. They're all out here. He may have been trying to get it on the ground down here before anybody got to it. Yeah, but you, I don't know. Why would you pop it up so high? You got caught in the wind. Uh, well, it didn't work. Nebraska's got the ball at the 40, and Keith and McCant going down the line on the option. Takes some punishment, gains about three yards. 22-21, Washington has the lead. I'll tell you what, we've seen some gut checks here. Washington has really come back strong after the, uh, the touchdown was called back, and they went for it on fourth down. They went in and scored. They were into the win. They went in and scored. Now it's Nebraska's turn. 10.46 to go in the ball game. McCann. Down he goes. Ball loose. Huskies have it. Stephen McCann hit behind the line of scrimmage. I think Fraley got him. And lost control of the ball. And on it is Paxton Talele. Five times the Nebraska quarterback has been hit behind the line of scrimmage tonight. This may be the biggest lick as far as Washington's concerned and the biggest hurt for the Huskers. It's Fields right there, number three, when McCant tried to come back, the blitzing style of defense that uh, Jim Landright, the defensive coordinator, employs, got to him, knocked the ball out, another big turnover. This time, it goes to Washington. So with 10.35 to play, the Huskies make a break. First down at the Nebraska 33. Ball given to Vino Bryant working in the traffic. He's drilled backwards, but not until he gets to the 27-yard line by Steve Farmer. We'd like to pause right here, five seconds, for our ABC stations to identify themselves. This is KETV, Channel 7, Omaha. Time remaining is going to get more important as we wind along. Ten minutes now coming up. Barry's in the backfield. Hobart keeps it, throws it underneath. No good. Intended for Jones. The ball is underthrown. And you got a penalty flag thrown on the other side, and it comes late. Well, that might be the old personal foul sort of a thing. On Washington. There was obviously something going on beyond uh, the location of the ball. The Atlanta Braves shut out Los Angeles last night, leading one to nothing tonight in the fourth inning. They lead the uh, National League West by half game. It's going to be third down now. Rongan has been thrown out. 
or he's out. He has out of the game. I don't know who the personal foul was on, but there was there was a minor altercation, I guess, after the play. Ball has come back to the 42-yard line. Andrew Peterson is in at the weak guard position. Barry and uh, Jones behind uh, Billy Joe Hobart. He pumps it up and lets it go for McKay. And McKay is mugged down at the five-yard line. It'll be first and uh, first down for Washington. It's a 15-yard penalty. Kenny Wilhite was a half a step out of the play, and he goes right up his back right here, and the flag came flying out. Oh, no, that's pretty close, huh? I think he uh, did get him. He it's did get position. Him. It's position. I don't know, Keith. I'd like to see that one more time. Looked like he got there the same time the ball. The ball was underthrown. If it had been out a little bit further, it would have been easy six. Well, <laughs> that evens it up, huh? First down, Washington. First down. He turns in a uh, second and long situation into a first down. The way the foot speed these guys have. Looks to me like Those he was hitting got him. No chance yeah, to get out was, there and see him. He was really. hitting him just the same time the ball got there. This is Barry. And Barry is rolled back. By Big Darren Williams. Let's take a look at it one more time. Looking at it from where I'm sitting, though, as it was happening, it looks, see, he's got a hold of him there. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. He's got his no, hand he up doesn't. his back. Well, if he had his hand on his back, okay, but it, well, run it back, just. Oh, well, whatever, if guys, his right hand, the, the official is right. If his right hand is on that helmet, it's a foul, and it's a good call. The guy Game was is down to the 20-yard line. <laughs> <laughs> Give him the credit. Matt yeah. Jones, Garrett, in <laughs> nine minutes to play ball in the ball game. Jones. The tackle by 92, Perella, 90 These guys run so fast, you need a motor scooter to keep up with well, them. Well, that, that's a good point. That's why it's so important that these officials are in right and proper position. That's why they went to seven officials. Total yards for Washington now, 507. But they only lead by one point. Trying to help themselves here, and they're making mistakes. Underneath Pierce, the tight end, and he's got the first down inside the Nebraska 15-yard line. David White playing very good defense against him, but Pierce just outsized him. It's been all Washington for the last, well, the third quarter, and as you mentioned, even into the second quarter, Keith. Yep. Yep. There's a lot of grit in those guys wearing red and white. Pitch to Bean O'Brien. Finds a crack. Whoa. That's a lick. Mike Anderson. Mike Anderson. Anderson, uh, 48, and Will Williams, 98. And Mike is 230, and Williams, 250. That's a couple of big inside backers. Bryant with 18 uh, carries and 140 yards. He's out, Barry's in. Through the yardage in the second half for Washington, 245 to only 46 for Nebraska. Barry. Little change of direction. Button heads inside the three-yard line. Where it'll be first down and goal, Washington. You've got 7.41 to play in the game. And now, uh, Charlie McBride sends in his goal line defense. On the three-yard line. And the Huskies are camped on the three. First and three. They didn't have all the people out there that they wanted. 7.31 to go. Washington threatening. Back with more after a word from our ABC station. Tomorrow it's picking. Sean Nicely's Pinpointers. Tuesdays on News Watch 7 at 5 and 10.
Seven thirty-one to go in the ball game. A one-point lead for the fourth-ranked Washington Huskies over the ninth-ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers. Washington's ball, first down and goal at the Nebraska three-yard line. Hobart keeps it. Touchdown, Washington. In the second half, Washington has 15 first downs to one for Nebraska. Washington has 40 plays to 15, 263 yards to 46, and they have taken the lead 28 to 21 as Hobart takes it in for his second touchdown of the night. The extra point try by Hanson now out of Bjornsson's hole. Yeah. Is good. An eight-point lead. The big play at this juncture of the ball game, well, it's got to be this. And it belongs to uh, Don James because he called it. Well, it was fourth and about nine yards to go. It was right after the touchdown had been called back. He went for it. Fourth and nine. This is McKay on a little slant out and in route. Picks up the first down. And the next play, they scored. And they've been scored touchdowns ever since. And they came right back in their next possession and just went right down the field. There's been a bunch of big plays in this game. But I think that play right there, coming back after the touchdown had just been taken away from them by a holding penalty, and then coming back on fourth down and then scoring, that has to be the key play. It is now 29 to 21, Washington. Hanson will kick off into the wind. The receivers for Nebraska are standing up on their 10. Last time, Hanson didn't get much on it. This time, he knocks it on the ground down. It's rolling around, and it's finally picked up at the 30 and brought back by Tom Young to the uh, full 35-yard line. Well, if you're Tom Osborne now, you've used a lot of quarterbacks in the last four or five games going back to last year. Who do you stay with? Who do you go with? He's got McCann out there. So Keith and McCann comes back onto the field and will go to work in this possession from the Nebraska 35-yard line with Calvin Jones, the eye back. McCann throws off the hand of Calvin Jones, incomplete. And number 13 for Washington, Andy Mason, came roaring in and decked the Nebraska quarterback. McCann is a fifth-year senior who has, had only played three plays before this year. He was never an option quarterback in high school, and I think that's what really slowed him down. He is probably the best athlete, pure passer and runner of all of the quarterbacks, and I think that's why Osborne has gone to him in the second game of the season, third game of the year. McCann back again. Again throws for Jones, and again it's off Jones' hands, incomplete. And... Uh, both of those balls thrown by McCant could have been handled quite easily by Jones, except they were not. Jones is a running back, and the Nebraska running backs don't get the ball thrown at him very often. Eleven times last year they caught the ball, and only five times the year before did uh, running backs from the University of Nebraska catch the football. Bostic scored on a 42-yard pass play from McCant. He hasn't seen the ball in a while. Extreme pressure by Washington. Tommy Smith, Hillary Butler, and Donald Jones, and it was Jones and Butler climbing all over. Well, that's, that's, that's the pressure that's defense. The yeah, that's the pressure defense. Brett Collins is the man shaken up. Take a look right here. These guys at the line of scrimmage, you see these people lined up man to man. These people are going to be coming, putting pressure on the quarterback. He's not going to have time to look around. Everybody lines up, becomes clean inside. Yeah, it was not McCant's fault. Two plays, he hit the receiver right in the hands, and then the third one, he uh, was blitzed. This will be the ninth punt of the ball game by Mike Stiggy. He didn't punt at all in the first two games, but he sure made up for it tonight. <laughs> what was it Bo said earlier today? Oh, they'll punt today. <laughs> I guarantee you. Bryant almost dropped that one. 
I mean, uh, Stinky has a great leg. Uh, he's not sitting a mile high, and uh, Vino almost dropped it. At 12 9 Pacific time next Saturday, one of the big ball games of the season. Florida State number one, Michigan number three. It comes from Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor. And then we go regional at 3.30 at 12.30 Pacific. Our regional games, Georgia Tech, Clemson, Colorado, Stanford, Pitt, Minnesota. Check your local list next Saturday here on ABC. First down, Washington. They're 21. Huskers have got to play some reckless defense now. Bryant looking around. Tripped up behind the line of scrimmage and number 97. Pat Engelbert was on the ground, but he got him with a dangling leg. Penn State has defeated BYU 33-7 at Happy Valley in Pennsylvania. Vino Bryant was hit on the leg and comes out. He, had, he took a whack on the shin bone, I he think. A, he had a, a banged up knee uh, yep. in the fall and, and didn't, didn't play a lot in the first game. Ball is at the 20. Loss of a yard on the play. Second down, 11. This is Barry. Trying to get outside and can't do it. So that's a loss of another yard as Mike Petko fought his way inside to get a piece of him and brought him down. There's no quit in these Huskers, that's for sure. The Huskies better continue to try to make first downs. They don't need any more points at this time. They just need to make some first downs and take some time off the clock. Remember, the wind is still at the back of the uh, Nebraska Cornhuskers. Clock running at six minutes to play, and it is third down and 12 for Washington. Nebraska's packed in there pretty tight, but Washington stays on the ground, and this is Barry getting outside. Oh, he's gone. There isn't anybody around him if he can outrun one man, and it's touchdown, Washington, and the door just slammed. 81-yard run. Mike Anderson was the only man that had a chance to run him down, and a linebacker's not going to run down a tailback very often. And that thumping sound was the door slamming. 81-yard run by Jay Barry. And Washington has scored on their last four possessions in the second half. The 35-21. And Travis Hampton trying to make it 36 right here. You've got 5.36 to play in the game. Take a look at the battle up front. We said that whoever controlled the line of scrimmage, just straight block and nothing big. That's Travis Hill, 93. He's trying to be walled off, and then Barry goes around him. He's going to win that battle with uh, Raymakers every time, number 67. And Barry has enough speed to outrun everybody. The only man was 48. That's Mike Anderson. And they're having to pressure, having to gamble. And it, they got burned. Third down and long, a draw play. He gets outside. And he just, just does this on his own. That's Carmer, number 31, who really should have made the play and didn't. Carmer starting this year for the first time at strong safety. Really should have made the play, but what, what has changed, Keith? What, what happened? In the first half, it was all Nebraska dominating, especially in the first quarter. First quarter yeah. You know, what I think has happened is that it took, the, it took Washington a little while to settle down. This crowd was really into it. It took them a little while to settle down, and they've shown their dominance ever since. Hughes picks it up at the three, and he's taken down at the 15. So there, Nebraska will go to work at five minutes and 32 seconds to play in the ball game. 36-21. Four possessions, four touchdowns for Washington. Four in a row. I don't know. Do you say that uh, it's conditioning? No, I don't think it's conditioning. I don't either. I, I think I think 
Washington came in here. The crowd was into the game. I think they've just settled down, and they've, they've gotten... Hickman buries McCann. I mean, we've seen Washington play last year, and we saw him in the first ball game. This is the way they normally play. They can be a dominant team. We also saw Washington cave in at home against a beat-up UCLA team last November that cost them a chance at a national championship. And they have vowed not to let it happen again, and they put in, as they say, the, the extra day in the weight room. But look at the second half. Take a look at this. Dominant Number of plays, 44 to 19, and yards, tremendous. First down, 16 to 1. That's good to Bostic, and Bostic beats uh, the defender out of bounds beyond the marker, and it's first down, Nebraska. They're still tied. The wind's at their back, 450 to play. One big play, a touchdown, and uh, they're back in it. This is really the, not the type of offense, though, that you're going to come from behind with very well. I mean, for uh, Osborne's offense and the quarterbacks that he has, the type of throwing they do, they're not good drop-back passers. They need the running game, the threat of the running game. The, the pass feeds off the run. Not when you're 15 points down. You have to throw. Husky's got eight guys up there on the line of scrimmage. That ball is batted away just barely by Dana Hall. Got just enough of it to slap it down. It was intended for Nate Turner. But there was an instance. If the ball is a foot higher, Turner's got six points. You are right. It was it was there. And Hall made a nice play. For those who joined us late, Hall injured early in the ball game, hurt some ribs, put on a flak jacket, and is back out there playing. Those ribs have got to be hurting, too. And they're going home right after the game. McCann throws that slipped away. Very easily could have been picked off and gone six points the other way by Tommy Smith. When Nebraska is down by 15 points and has to throw, they are not a very good offensive team. And the clock shows 440 on third down and 10. McCant with very good protection delivers it to the eye back Derek Brown and Brown is close to her first down. Well they're going uh, right to left so that means the linesman on this side marked it with his left foot because you always mark it with the upfield foot right and that'll be close. Hurt on the play is Derek Brown hobbling about. First down for the Cornhusker. And I guess the, uh, the Dowers will come back out. We said earlier the Cornhuskers have lost five of the last six bowl games and eight of the last 12 the teams with winning records. Throws. That is an incomplete forward pass. His arm was definitely going forward. DeMarco Farr, a sophomore out of San Pablo, California, hit him from the blind side. Number 75. He's a throwing boy at 265. Blue, Blue Devils have scored a lot of points early season here. Houston took another licking today. Illinois, Verdusco a big day. Dunbar had a big ball game. I watched some of that. That's Ed Verdusco is something else, isn't he? I mean, yeah. that kid is just all grit. Yep. He is a tough kid. Forget about his size. McCant gets his ball away, but it's too high. Thrown into the sidelines and incomplete intended for John Bostic. That stops your clock at 4.13 to play in a ball game. 36-21. Washington taking over. Actually, Bolmo changed shirts before the halftime. And it really didn't change. Even though Nebraska went back to a 12-point lead, Washington was still marching up and down the field. This 
This is Jones. Calvin Jones brought down by Tommy Smith, but he picks up a Nebraska first down. Washington 49 yard line and 406 to play. That lady ain't sung yet. There's no quit in the, the uh, Cornhuskers, I can assure you of that. Scored an onside kick. Long downfield just beyond the arms of Bustick. That was a play down the left corner that in, in and out. Actually, that was just a fly on the sidelines. He couldn't run it down. There was one of the big surprises of the day as Arizona State defeats Southern California in Los Angeles, 32-25. You can see they did it on the ground. California by 10 over Arizona in the second quarter. McCant throw it again. Got a man over there, passes good to Tyrone Hughes. And Hughes is out of bounds at the Washington 26. And you got 342 to play. Washington defensively now is just being a little bit passive. They're going out of their style of being aggressive and blitzing. You, you know, you don't, you don't, that's, I would do the same thing. You're 15 points up. You don't want to give them any easy scores, but uh, they scored. Kick an onside kick. You're back in the ball game. Got it. It may change right here. Screenplay. Yep. Oh. Almost intercepted by Chico Fraley. It was tipped. And Fraley on the run almost had it. And Fraley can run. He gets that. See you later. It'll be second down and ten. Atlanta still leading Los Angeles in the fifth inning, one to nothing. I tell you, Atlanta's got some pitching, don't they? Youngsters, too. Except for Charlie Liebrandt. Charlie's having a great year. That's the eye back, Jones. Here's what the two quarterbacks have done in our ball game. Hobart started slowly, coming on for 283 yards. He scored a couple of touchdowns himself. McCant, 172 yards is probably a career number for him. But when you know when the Nebraska quarterbacks throw that much, it's not good. Nope. That's picked off. Dave Hoffman, the inside linebacker, dropping back on coverage, picks it off, runs like a fullback. And it's Washington ball, first down at their own 45-yard line. Dave Hoffman, here he is right here. McCant's going to come back and try to hit the receiver over here. And as, as he looks over here, McCant, I mean, uh, Hoffman is just going to slide over and pick off the pass by McCant. See, he looked all the way, Keith. That was good play by Hoffman. McCant looked to his left, looked for his receiver. The linebacker saw him looking there, slid over, and made the play. Eric Bjornsson is in, a redshirt freshman from Oakland, California. You would think he would be from uh, Linden, but he's not. He's from California. Gives the ball to Napoleon Kaufman, the freshman out of Lompoc. 5'9", 170, a real burner, hard to get a hold of, a darting kind of a running back. A lot of people say he looks like Mike Garrett all over again. And they want to get him some playing time to season him because he may be very important down the road. It was a year ago that Colorado came from behind to beat Nebraska here on this field. And since then, uh, there's been a lot of grumbling about the Huskers not winning the big game because they went on to lose at the end of the season to Oklahoma, lose to Georgia Tech in the bowl game. And uh, a lot of spoken, a lot of writing about it, a lot of talking about it in the media. Well, I brought it up yesterday in my conversation with Coach Tom Osborne, and uh, this is what he had to say. It is sometimes a little hard to understand where nine and three really was viewed upon, uh, almost like a uh, you know, like we were three and nine, and it maybe wasn't all that bad last year. 
Well, the last time a team got 500 yards against Nebraska was Penn State when the Lions went for 515 in 1982. Washington so far today with uh, a minute and a half to play has 609. In the last time uh, a back ran uh, for more than 80 yards, uh, Jay Berry had that 80-yard touchdown really iced it. The last time anybody ran for 80 yards against Nebraska Keith was Keith Jackson. That's right. The Oklahoma tight end on a reverse back in 1985. But the season is not over. The way this season is going, you might be able to win your national championship with a loss. And if you're going to lose, lose it early. Lose early. Right. There's some movement. And that will get flags out of the pocket. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Jack O'Hara. Coordinating producer of ABC's college football, Bob Goodrich, who produced tonight's game. Our game tonight was directed by Monsieur Larry Cam. Our technical director, Gary Larkins. Associate producer for college football, Jim Ressler. Our associate director, Patrick McManus. Unit manager, Joe Alvarado. Our tech ops, Sal Fong and Frank Fager. Assistants to the producer, Mitch Green, Steve Shunks. That man is Dave Bernson. Spotter is Todd Berry. Mark Amedo and Tim Goodman on the computers. Booth coordinator, Jenny Thompson. Sideline coordinator, Dick Shafter. Best dressed man in the booth is Bob Greasy. Jack of Roots freezing to death down on the sidelines. And I'm Keith Chuck. <laughs> Did you mention Turi? <laughs> and that is Kaufman carrying the ball. She's sitting in the corner warm. Yes, she is. <laughs> 20 seconds to go. It is a huge win for Washington. It is a bitter loss for Nebraska. But it does not bring the walls tumbling down. I'll say it again. The clock ticking along. Hard to swallow for that man there. A fine, decent man and a very good coach. Great win for that coach, Don James. Your final score, 36-21 for Washington. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Billy Joe Hobart of the Washington Huskies and Derek Brown of the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Hobart tonight, 23 of 40, 283 yards a touchdown.